Good morning and welcome to the Morning Connection. We are here live at the Ligony Club. Well, you know that every Thursday is like Christmas for us. We're grateful to the Ligony Club for hosting us here on Thursdays. And so we thank both the club or club family and JD's Urban Pub for their hospitality. We also thank you, the listeners, who join us on a Thursday morning. Thursdays, ha well, we don't do a lot of calls on Thursdays. So I know that when you join us on a Thursday, it's really to listen, and that's a blessing. So thank you to those who are online and those who have joined us on air. Thank you also to the crew back at the studio and in the house with us this morning who will make all things possible for us. Good morning, Pastor Percival. How are you? Good. The sun is up. There's no mist, no gloom. It's up and about. <laughs> the sun is here, always is and here. Your and son there and was your a daughter. Yeah, <laughs> my son and my daughter. And and interestingly, it, what they say, the sun rises in the east. So they say, but that's and more that's poetic. That's not scientific. And and it, and it sets in the west. <laughs> there was a east rising yesterday at Girls and Boys Championship. Oh, and that's also poetic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Her name was East. And she um. won the class 400 meters. Ooh. I was just so, I'm simply amazed in terms of the talent that keeps coming and rising to the fore yesterday. And one of the interesting things that is happening, the normal powerhouses um, in the championship, the KC's, JC's, Calabar. But you now you're here in school like Mushet. Where's Mushet? Where's Mushet High School? You know where that is? No. Centralone, Mushet okay. High School, yes. And in this um, like Steertown Academy, which is in your parish. Mm -hmm. St. Anne. St. Anne. Mm -hmm. So it was fabulous. And then the true champ stood out yesterday. Um, there were, there were um, rumors that um, a reigning world junior champion would have been beaten by Brianna Liston, but they went down to the line and the world champ prevailed. When you're a champion, you're a champion, you know. So if they want to take away your crown, they have to really come. Have to fight I, I, you for to, it. And she, they fought right down to the line. And Tiana Clayton triumphed in the end. But we have so much talent. I'm just looking on the women's side. Mm -hmm. And it looks like um, Shelly goes, Elaine goes. But then mm, you have the Brianna. And you, right down to the uh, 13, 14 year olds. And I'm going, wow. On the men's side, we're coming back. So it's good. And, yes, and God I think, has blessed us. Yes, right. And we have to be so grateful that a small piece of rock, which is about 8,000 square miles, they say, which is Jamaica landmass, has produced so many people that have done so well at every level in terms of world athletics. We are, we are a powerhouse. And remember, you continue to declare that you can pull up that declaration that you speak <laughs> about what will happen <laughs> um, for Jamaicans. We see it happening all the time in terms of what um, our father is blessed us. And he needs... I'm pulling, up, need I'm pulling up the declarations and, because uh, you've asked me to. There's and we have, so many of them. Yeah, and we need to continue to make those declarations of our nation. All right, which one you want? That um, we'll be flourishing. That's the flourishing one, the one that... Oh, I have decreed a season of outstanding achievement. Yes. Um, yes, there, there, are, there are those. A season of outstanding achievement, mm -hmm. not only in athletics or sport, but in every area of endeavor. And I quote Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. plans, plans to give to you a give hope. You to prosper you. And a future. Mm -hmm. Plans to hope. prosper you. That you will not be defeated and we will not be defeated. We continue to make that declaration over Jamaicans. Fear God and be blessed on this seventh day of April. Seventh day of April 2022. Perfection. Yes. It's come. Mm -hmm. A cycle has come to an end and we will move into the new beginning. A new dawn is rising over our country as mm -hmm. we speak. This, as the dawn has risen. This this month of April, this month of April has so many significant um, things happening. Things happening. Today is um, Dr. Claudine Miller. Mm -hmm. It's her birthday today. Mm -hmm. 
um this in this month too we have the birthdays of some famous people in the rastafarian community okay. as well a number of things are happening in this in this month um happy birthday to my dear friend claudine from myself the producer and and your wino club the wino <laughs> no, club gonna, yeah wino club yeah I you know, know, if you were wine in another country, what you'd be considered, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I yes. hope it is not that. Um, we're not in another country. Oh, <laughs> 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 whatever it is. We're you know, right. language is we're a powerful <laughs> thing because it goes we're right across here. Um, we're right here. countries and borders. And it's interesting how some things have gone from Jamaica to other countries mm-hmm. and has been um, accepted as a part of their natural can Damage. I tell you too? Mm-hmm. Right out the gate, we have um, Basco from, um, where is he? Why was I thinking he's in England? Anyway, we have Denatal Basco mm-hmm. giving us greetings and salutations and giving thanks for the justice for Nzinga, which is showing up the injustices and corruption um, in Jamaica. So, so right out, this is with reference now to the... The fact that um, she's won a case against the government. And the... Oh dear, what is her name? She's she's actually the meeting office this week. Oh, Harrison. Um, Miss ha- Harrison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the public the defender. defender. What she said. Um, she has come out and said that um, there should be damages awarded. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she has and she has recommended that um, Enzinga should be compensated for the insult which she suffered. So the, the cutting of her locks while she was in custody. So does that carry weight? Because um, the public defender... It does carry weight, whether... I mean, accept clearly, it or not. It, whether it, or it, it is acted on mm-hmm. um, with, in a prompt fashion okay. remains to be seen. That's interesting. Um, remember last how we know last that... Last leak. Last leak. Last leak. That came to mind. It's a fabulous one, that, that, actually. This is a last leak or a good last leak. You know, when you play... <laughs> <laughs> and, mm-hmm. you, and you're ready to go home. Or bad like reach you. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> last week, so who get the last week win? <laughs> and they can't do anything to touch you. Yes. I love that. Yeah, so um, I was intrigued by it because, of course, we know that the Office of the Public Defender is a commission of parliament. That's what I was so, referring so, to, yes. Right. And it also means that while she makes this recommendation, it it may or may not be accepted, but in any event, it's not enforceable unless... Um, Enzinga takes it further. Is she gonna take it further? She has already taken it further. Because she's gone. She's done a her, civil suit. The constitutional, absolutely. All right. So we've we've moved very briskly to the first break of the morning. It's six thirty a.m. You're with the morning connection and your hosts Minette and Percival. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to the morning connection. <laughs> All right, Pastor, <laughs> need to stop laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day but, to but be alive. Yeah, and, and we could share it. Pastor came bearing gifts. He brought mangoes. Um, so there's kind yeah. of a little inside <laughs> joke going about. <laughs> he handed the mangoes to someone. <laughs> and then he told me he brought mangoes for me. <laughs> so I'm just making sure. But thank you, Pastor, for sharing <laughs> the bounty of the land. You know, earlier when you were speaking about the the talented athletes um that have uh, jamaica has lays claim to because i won't say jamaica has produced because we know that um the production happens <laughs> in secret places you understand but um i just wanted to say that this talent that we see being displayed in pretty much all spheres of life and yes that is one of the declarations that we want to see some changes in all spheres not of just life some. not just some but everything that we touch, everything that we do, we should see it rising to a certain degree of excellence. This talent mm. is the same wellspring of abundant life and goodness that gives us our great musicians, our great artists, our great lawyers, our scientists. great doctors, our great scientists. Um, so far, I think we're only not getting great politicians. But suffice it to say... <laughs> It is the same. No, we have gotten well some, but it is sprinklings. Talent. Yes, yes we, it is. and we want it to be a general, be a yeah, general standard. Thing. Yes, we that, mu- yeah, that must we be a line of samples. True, <laughs> that we produce at that level, but it gives me hope because even as we talk about 
um, the greatness that we can display and that we currently display in some spheres, it means it is possible everywhere. It so is. politicians, take heart. There is greatness in you yet to be uncovered. We're encouraging it. We're calling it forth right we are now pulling in it out. the name, the powerful name. We have to make yeah. the declarations because it's in the spiritual and, and we now it. see the manifestation we're in the physical realm because you play such an important role in terms of the greatness that comes leadership without leadership great leadership that understands their place in the whole matrix and rubrics of what god is doing you are the, the we call it somebody once said that within organization you cannot rise above the level of the leadership they are what they call That's the it. pattern yes that is and how they, it is. They establish they, the benchmark. They are the they are the person that is the in limiting limiting factor in um, operations management, and you you we you, you're trying to get something done, but there's that um, limiting factor, limiting point that you have to break it open. You have to crash it. But you're exposing you're exposing an idea whose time has come, yeah. namely that. There is a natural order to things that will emerge if you leave the field to grow and to mature on mm -hmm. its own. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the leadership that you see at the helm mm -hmm. is not the natural leadership that is emerging in the field. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes that is how you end up with military coups. Yep. When mm -hmm. and over to our and, totalitarian and, and regimes. Absolutely. Authoritarian and regimes. I think the time has come mm -hmm. where rather than or being being trapped in in a relationship a dysfunctional relationship where a process is is creating leadership mm -hmm. that does not fit that does not work mm -hmm. we begin to search through and study the ground and find where the natural talent is emerging mm -hmm. or where the necessary talent is emerging so that we can achieve change i've, I've gone in this direction because I see a thing happening. Um, it's happening. It's happening all around us, and in Jamaica, what we are we're we're exploring the various pockets of discontent mm -hmm. to develop a better understanding of where the dissonance exists mm -hmm. between what we have and what we want, what we're doing and what we should do, and to pull out of that exercise the things that are necessary for growth and for prosperity years ago when i was um looking at a, a a renovation project i started to dive into architectural um it caught it piqued your <laughs> interest <laughs> yes my I, my interest was stirred to begin to just interrogate how persons are doing things in the professional in, as, as professionals in that realm. And I read an article that spoke about the development or the creation of public parks. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the designer... it is. The designer was saying that when you select the space in which you're going to put your park, you leave it and just study how people walk, where they go. And what you will see are some natural parks pathways emerging. emerging. That designer says he then goes and designs the walkways in his park. If he catches where people want to go, mm -hmm. you won't find the, the, the tracks that are emerging in the grass, mm -hmm. which you always, anywhere you look, you see um, a paved walkway, mm -hmm. and then you see a, f a beaten foot track. <laughs> that's really where people want to go. That's right, and that's such an important thing. It is so. it's such an important that we put these parts but you're forcing people to do to some take an to unnatural, unnatural path. part for them. Yeah. Yes. And, so and, and even as a leader, um, if you are trying to bring about change in any organization and you go in and try to force something on them, you know what's going to happen to the organization? It's going to break. Well, that is new mm -hmm. wine in old wine yeah, skin and right. it's going to so, explode. So, so therefore, a, a wise man said to me, want if you want to bring about change are there no wise women who speak to you i'm just reflecting on <laughs> because i inter in interrogate with with men with men 
with I'm men some of the time. <laughs> um, so the producer is claiming the words of the wise man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm dying with laughter. <laughs> no, but right, tell me what the wise man said. I'm just no, there have been some wise it. women in my life. My mom is one. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that I've interacted with. There is a lady. But you don't quote them. That's all I'm saying. It, no, but this quote that, I, that I'm about to make it was yeah. i'm just reflecting on it yeah and it was actually a female who said it to me she said percival ah, you see percy i am prophetic i am apostolic <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are a prophetess <laughs> don't remember you get the rule that that name yeah, there the blue. yesterday i had a man call it yesterday. call you out I tell you, man, he could not remember my actual name, but he, room, but he was it, called, it, giving it, me a title. A oh Lord, may yeah. I lift him! Moses it, did say he would. He wish that everybody would, would prophesy. prophesy. You know, but it is. So no, so but the, anyway, I was uh, just motivated to ask you if, yeah, it, but it's if true. there are no wise women who speak. So a wise woman said to you, "Carry and on." If you are seeking to bring about change in within an organization, and you are trying to impose something on them without building a consensus and if you're forcing yourself on them you are gonna get so much resistance that pretty soon you'll be out of that you will be out, out of that Absolutely. organization yes yes and it is not to say it is not to say that a leader just sits and wait for the, the no my name say you're a part of the idea. person no 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 a leader must have the ability you're, you're to gentlemen. pull the best from his people or her people and when you get to the point where you're trying to introduce new wine, yeah, at gentle. least you know yeah. how to pour it yeah. and you would have prepared the skins to receive it. it um now we are gonna have a guest join us in a short while sizzla kalonji and of course you know i had to go do some research what the name means because those words cannot be just accidental and given the man's artistry it is not possible that he would have just chosen two random words. No, no. You see, so. because he comes out of the African context. And you know, if you go to Africa, your meaning. name must mean something. Names have meaning. The, and so. significantly. And I think a lot of us have adopted that. Even I tell you all the time, I've named my children. And I see it being manifested in terms of how they are and what destiny they're walking into in terms of purpose. So, it is so important. This is a... Thing I just sent to parents, you are out there seeking for a name. You just give the picnic a name. Don't just give the child a name. Give a ch the child a name that is prophetic in terms of their destiny. Their destiny and, and you their see purpose. That happen. So, like your son named Daniel. Daniel. You know what that means? You know, like whoever Daniel in my life means mm -hmm. something. Yes. Means something. Means something. Mean so, something. what do you think, um, Mr. Miguel Orlando Collins? Mm hmm who is known to the world, his stage name is Sisla Kolonji. What do you think it means? When I hear Sisla, I think of something burning. <laughs> Are something you copying from my notes? Let no, me hide it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hear something burning. Well, a uh, the, the, the Kolonji, I don't know. It sounds very African yeah, in the, terms of what is, it means. The, so the Sisla is burning essence mm -hmm. and Kolonji is victorious. So... Um, we're gonna have the the, the 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 burning, spicy, inspirational. Um, the essence of a thing is its its very heart, soul, character. We're gonna have a visit um, from the Sizzler himself, and Kalonji means victorious because who burning has not overcome the burning essence of victory? Yes, who has not overcome? But he's an overcomer himself. When you look a little bit at his his career. Um, he is by far one of the most commercially and critically successful contemporary reggae artists. And he's noted for the high number of solo albums. Since 2018, he has released 56 what? solo albums. 56 2018? solo albums. Yes. But my great interest in him and why he's joining us this morning is really not because of his artistry in music. And it's why I made the point that that same wellspring of talent that gives us great athletes mm. also lays the foundation for greatness in every other area. I mean, I, I, when I visited Judgment Yard and spoke with him and got an understanding of what he's doing in terms of the politics of his people, in terms of the community leadership that he mm. offers, and even for his maintaining a home in August Town when the, the, the tradition is for persons to do well and to move out. 
but he's become, I would say, the essence of the community in into terms which of peace he and was love. born. Unity. Yes, the restorative justice initiative that really has come out of his work in the community. Not just him alone, because we know that first. it's a lot of people work to, to make things to happen. Concept, yeah. But as you said, great leadership will produce great results. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, um, we can't deny his role in accomplishing that. What is especially um, compelling to me is that when you take Sizzler and you look at him, he reminded me somewhat of the producer's um, big son, um, of fairly slight stature. I want son him off. Two. A two son, no, big son, a true. He has one big son. I want little son. <laughs> 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 little son is not a little son man at all. He's no. a big, he's and a so, giant of a young and, man. And, 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 and therein lies my point. The, a person's stature and appearance has no connection to the greatness that is within them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tell you, when I entered Judgment Yard, I wasn't sure who Sizzler was because <laughs> you see the pictures and you know the, the you artist. Think of tall you see the person on stage. Mm. But when you see them, you know, standing around, I very quickly knew who he was by the commanding and authoritative way in which he, he took charge of um, the process and the conversations and how he led his people and so on. There's greatness in that man. Do you, you, sure you, you ask him why, why it is called Judgment Yard? It's a judgment. <laughs> That's what I did say. <laughs> no, when he comes here, you can have him I explain said, Why it. you call it? No, I know I about judgment yard long, long time. You know? I didn't ask him why it's called judgment yard. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a place where the peop the persons, persons in the area, I think it, they have given it the name judgment yard. Yes. I really, I'd be, I'd right. curious to find I, out. I want to hear his, I want to hear the story of it, but I don't want to hear it by myself. We can mm -hmm. all hear it together. Mm -hmm. But when we say judgment, the, the thing about it is when we talk about judgment in in ordinary speech we tend to focus on the punitive um what do you call it now executive the we, we think of it in a way that involves more of the austere side of it mm -hmm. than just its ordinary meaning of exercising discretion and discernment and being able to 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 interact with others in a way that does not condemn or ostracize or marginalize. Every day we make a judgment. I look at the beautiful think, young lady standing true. across from me, and I'm making judgments about various things. And, and that's and I was about to make that point that in yes. terms of what judgment means, you some people think of you've done something wrong and you're gonna get punishment, but you make judgments every day based on information that you have. And what you, you observe. observe. Yeah, and, so and you, so, yeah, yeah, so, and good judgment is what makes you be blessed and to prosper because you're exercising good judgment in the things that you do. You know, when we were kids, there was a, 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 a category of garments known as your judging clothes. Yes, I remember those. <laughs> you, you, and, and your mother would say to you, go put on your judging clothes. You come from church, you cannot play. <laughs> in your church clothes, go put on your judging clothes. All right, so because I am a bit of a wordsmith, I had to figure that one out. So you know that that judging is from the word drudge. Mm -hmm. It's your drudgery clothes. Yes, the, work the clothes. Work clothes that you do. The, but so we, it, so we had, had, had as but as it kids just came to mind. Yeah, we like. just as 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 kids growing up, it was our judging <laughs> clothes. Judging but really, clothes. The, the English said it was your drudging clothes. But as Jamaicans. Yeah, no Nobody have drudgery, drudgery clothes. clothes. No, we not <laughs> Put taking on that your drudgery clothes. No, it was your judging clothes. But it had me thinking. I mean, you know, as a child, that in the ordinary, every everyday cut and thrust of life, you're judging. <laughs> but it's true. You're very judgmental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're judging. When I was learning to drive, I remember my driving instructor used to use the word judgment when he was referring to making an assessment of the right distance that should be between the wheel of the car and the and the curb yeah and and i it, in driving the word judgment would always be you in my mind good judgment, because yeah. you have to exercise good judgment what is Every the correct crash. stopping distance are you traveling too, too close fast. can uh, you turn you coming can out you turn. Cars coming down the road can my judgment. Absolutely. So all of those things are related in, in my to early, judgment. Yeah, in my early days of driving, I was I had poor judgment uh -oh, as the so bumper many, of my car. No, the, many the, many mishaps. There were many not with Scratches. other people's vehicles. You know, the gate post never stayed in the same place. Uh oh. And the the palm tree, even when I lived in the BVI, and and mm, you're parking like 
in an open area and there's a palm tree, somehow your bumper would brush the palm tree. <laughs> My judgment was poor when it comes to has it. It's usually better? reversing. Oh, it has matured considerably. But it's still a brush the palm yeah. tree. No, 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 no. Can't and afford to do that and now. And <laughs> <laughs> your judgment, can I tell you? Your judgment improves when you have a, a, a stern eye on cost and consequence. Okay. Which is a reality. But you know, as you get older in terms of those things, your judgment can become impaired. You mean as as a like a disability, the emerging disability yeah. among mm. old people. Yeah. You mm. don't hear as well. You know, it's one of the things that make me chuckle that a lot of us who are so insensitive to the needs of the disabled older don't people. realize that age is a disability. Yeah. And you will get to the point where you can't move as fast, you can't move as you feel like. You can't see, you can't hear, your hands fail you, your body gets weaker, and you are now suffering under a disability. I just think that the way God has organized things is just marvelous. Because if you live with compassion for others during it your years it of comes strength, back at you. it will come back to you. I and I, I, you see a lot of people you know, not being well treated at a certain time in their life. And I just cast my mind and imagine, I wonder why. Or just judgment. All right. So, <laughs> so we we'll discover the, the story of judgment yard. Is break time already? I don't think so. I think per you, would you like a break? Yes, I'd like a break. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a break. I can have a break. <laughs> you don't have I to manufacture breaks. I notice ladies don't bring our water. Come give us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think the standards are falling. <laughs> <laughs> the standards are Catherine. not falling. They're as high as ever. Yeah, Catherine. All right. As soon as we catch sight of a service person, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll be here. I discovered um, something this morning. What was that? About JD's pub. I thought they were, they started from about 6.30. Only discovered that they opened at, at 7 or 9 o'clock. Yes. So if you want an early breakfast, you go in and a move. You, this is you, not the place you're saying? The, you, you come to 7 o'clock. No, 7 o'clock they open if you want to have breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> but the, no, But let me just put a disclaimer to that. The what food is, is excellent. That's not a disclaimer. <laughs> no, the, the disclaimer to what I just said to say, if you want something early in the morning, like yes. you're going out of town, and yes, you, yes. you, you, this is this wouldn't be the place for breakfast because they open at seven. The, the I kitchen. just discovered that this morning. The kitchen, but they begin serving at seven. seven yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well. But JD's pub, the food, good man. So, <laughs> and we invite people to come on a Thursday morning to to share with us. Um, in an open house, come and experience the ambience of the the club. Well, one or two persons have promised to drop by this morning. Okay. Um, because we are celebrating with the Rastafarian community. I think um, Bobo Greg, Prophet Greg. Oh, is I've heard so much about. I've never met You've him. You've not met him. Never right, met him. Well, Probably met him in my by. past life. Well, when you see him, you'll remember. Um, and as bongo yeah. Parsi. and I think there was one other caller who said he might he might pass by, but suffice it to say, um, it's gonna be an interesting morning. Uh, it's as gonna be interesting. Yeah. Another thing I discovered that there's no Congo Lowell. Yeah, bongo Percy of Congo Lowell. Oh, he's he's been what? I'm not sure what it means, but um, my my niece, my knee. Ah, I see. So it's twins, twinsies. <laughs> <laughs> My niece has, has um, anointed the producer as Congo Lowell. But there is Congo mm. Billy, um, and I think maybe that's why, because Lowell and his brother are twins. Are they look alike? They're not twins. But so one look more handsome than the other one. Lowell is his mother's gift to Billy, who Congo Billy wanted a brother. Okay. And his mommy said, "Sure, here's one." I said, "Go." <laughs> I see. So you're a gift so, to the world, so uh, brother Lowell. He's a gift to Congo Billy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for sure. Interesting. And Congo Billy shares him. So, for example, when I said, Lord, may I have? He says, sure, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. No, I understand. <laughs> well, you know that um, in, in, in my church, mm. this is what is frequently said by my own spiritual father. When you pray, God sends a man. Not in exactly that. Or a woman. Way. Well, God's gift to the world. Even Jesus, when he was leaving and he was establishing the different offices. Mm -hmm. um, and the Apostle Paul explained it as a gift. The gift to the church. To mm, the, yeah, you know. the, the five. 
the, the fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministries. Yeah, for but they Ephesians are occupied four. by people. Yeah. And so the people become the gift to of the service to, to the, the people. Right. Um, in my estimation, I'm going to say young man because um, I see here that is he was born in the 70s. He's a young man. <laughs> so he's a young man to us. Like us. Yeah. A little younger than us, but we can. He's you a are young man even to us. me. He's a younger man like me. I don't know about you. <laughs> he's a young man like me, so you can stay there. I go with your pastor, Percival, because yeah. you're usually dragging us in the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So now that you're bringing us closer to the light, um, yeah, he's a gift. This young man, mm -hmm. when I look at, you know, what little I've seen so far, he is a gift. He's a gift to his community for sure, because he has sought to use his influence and his resources to create an anchor in his community. He's a gift to Jamaica mm -hmm. because he has gone on a fairly wide international stage representing the music, the culture, the people. Um, he's a gift to the larger Rastafarian community because he has made the, the investment in studying in the different houses. He um, has studied with the Boba Shanti. Um, he's from the Nyabingi house. And there was one more. What is the other one? Twelve is tribes. Oh, Twelve she's tribes. not paying me any attention. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. He has also studied with Twelve tribes. Past, just confirming what pastor said um so in terms of his understanding of the different philosophies how they, and, and, how they operate. and how they operate he has studied with all three which is remarkable most people are not able to contain that kind of diversity mm. in their in their wineskins <laughs> <laughs> i love the wineskin analogy by the way as you can tell um and i believe that he's a gift to the world because if he if he continues on this path mm -hmm. of promoting change and putting himself in a position of leadership mm -hmm. to incite change, then the world will be the better for it. Um, I've been thinking a lot about the conversation to come and I'm warming up the minds of those who are listening to be, to be ready to receive it in a particular context. And here's what's been in my mind. Um, when God wanted to have an example a tribe he chose a tribe mm -hmm. well first he chose one man abraham mm -hmm. and then out of abraham he created a tribe which he chose mm -hmm. and used as a model to or what he should represent absolutely to display his relationship with humanity and to be sort of like the historians the record bearers mm -hmm. um of of all of this coming down the line to us so it is i would say well done producer <laughs> just saw him <laughs> leaping over <laughs> the balustrade like a man in his in his teens. I'm, fee I'm feeling <laughs> age, man. Feeling yeah, sorry you couldn't all see it. Um, but when so God chose one, mm -hmm. always moving from one to to to, to, to the many. All Similarly, two. That's the pattern. Mm -hmm. Similarly, two. Christ came, one man, mm -hmm. to be a sacrifice that could open a door for many. To find a way to reconciliation and and as we come down now to jamaica we see where at a time when there was so much trauma coming out of slavery one man got a particular vision that led to the creation of a little tribe and they have remained a small tribe i was reading in deuteronomy today where the lord said to moses was saying god didn't choose you because you were a, a big tribe in fact you were a small tribe but he chose you. Similarly, the Rastafarian as a, an indigenous group in Jamaica continues to be a small tribe. Mm -hmm. But when we come back, we want to look at we little about with Talawa. Mm -hmm. That's small what tribe, big impact. You said impact. something, and, I, you, and it just speaks as we, we go into the break. You said houses. No, they don't call it houses. Mansions. They are mansions. mansions. That is what they think. I go to prepare a place for you because in my father's, my father's house, house are many. Mansions, Church. but it tell you the house bigger than the mansion. That's what the house bigger than the mansion. The mansion is huge. I think of no, a house as a small mansion. If, if there are many mansions in one house, mm -hmm. then the house is bigger. Mm -hmm. Let's take our break. Good morning and welcome back to the morning connection. Excitement in the house now because our first guests have arrived and um, we're getting ready to bring them on camera with me. 
But in the meantime, let me just remind you, this month we are celebrating all things Rastafarian. And before we took the break, I was speaking about the pattern that we see laid down um, in in scripture, but also just the order of things as we understand the interaction between our divine creator and mankind, his created family. Always he chose one. He chose Abraham, and out of Abraham he pulled a tribe who have been the standard bearers. When we come now to look at our situation in Jamaica, in the trauma and the aftermath of slavery there emerged a group a small tribe the Rastafarians and what has been unique and special about them is that they unlike many others understood that when slavery they were sort of I would say they were the Daniel of Jamaica Daniel whilst in Babylon did the research and understood that there was a time at which the captivity Exile in Babylon would come to an end and the people would be returned home. Now, whether all went or only some is immaterial, but when the time ends, there are some specific consequences. This effort that you see for repatriation, for reparations, for even for restorative justice, has its place in that understanding and that principle. Our Rastafarian brothers have, from the outset, carried a torch for the homeland, for a return to our true point of origin, meaning those who were taken from Africa and brought to the Caribbean region, brought to Jamaica as slaves, have a point of origin. I tell you, they, they are coming in and even I feel excited, even though I know who they are. Sister Maxine, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please take your place. All right. So um, I have to be like one of those um, commentators who say now entering the stage, Sister Maxine Stowe, who has like, good morning to you, sir. It is such a pleasure to have you with us here. This the sizzler himself left to get make sure the microphone and good morning are we being joined by the musician you know it is a tradition that when the king enters the court the musicians must come the priest must come where is the priest are you wearing two hats this morning two turbans <laughs> yes okay all right um maybe i should move this microphone over so that there's no need to might have to do a, a change all right while we get the the audio set up i will just continue to let you know that in the house now and we'll get we'll hear their voices shortly we have with us i've been promising you from earlier in the week that as we celebrate all things rastafarian this month we would have with us notable members of the community and i think it is a fitting start to this season that we have both miss maxine stowe and we have with us um, i'm going to use both names mr miguel orlando collins but officially and spiritually recognized as sizzla kolonji i hope i got the, the pronunciation right i've been practicing perfectly so. all right he said perfectly so we have to get the microphone would you take the microphone in your hand when you're ready or maxine we can start by just um welcome you back welcoming you back to the show yeah blessed morning to Morning connection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Connecting with your um, lovely and edified audience, you know, because you've been <laughs> fertilizing them for <laughs> quite yes. a few months. We, we, we've been preparing yeah. the you've field been preparing that is them true. for such a, a reason as this, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have the station and your program as a media partner um, for the month, you know, mm -hmm. and just looking forward to the revelations that should, you know, emerge this morning. Can I tell you, um, yesterday, at, at some point in, in, in the mid-morning-ish, um, Mr. Shaw said to me, we need to promote this all day, all day. So um, we, we went even deeper with the promotion because I think um, somewhere in there was just the, the, the growing understanding that these conversations are important. They're important not just for the Rastafarian community, 
but they're important for Jamaica at large. Um, you and I are in agreement that the role which the Rastafarians have played um, in Jamaica and for Africans everywhere is a critical one. As the, and the awareness keeps expanding. Yes. Um, you see more and more persons first recognizing that the, the freedom of expression is tied up with your very existence and your, your cultural artifacts. You are entitled to ownership of it, participation in the economics of it, and you, it's a gift to the world. So now we see everyone acknowledging that what Rasta has created, the music that has come out of it, really are, are to be recognized at the highest levels as a gift to the world. How do you feel as a gift to the world? <laughs> well, you know, we're approaching 100 years, um, 1930 uh, to 2030, you know, and you know that globally 2030 is a major year about achieving sustainable goals. So mm -hmm. we're, what, 2022? Mm -hmm. eight so years we're just to go. eight years eight to go. Years to so go. And eight is the number of new beginnings. Well, so we're this here. is a fortuitous <laughs> time. I'm going to ask you to just introduce our special guest in his true character, both spiritually and politically. I mean, he's so well known as an artist that that goes without saying. But I'd like you to do the introduction before um, he gets to just, you know, greet us. Um, I'm sure he has something planned <laughs> as, a, as a greeting. Yes, well, you know, um, he sits in the office of the indigenous Rastafari president. He was given that role by the Nyabingi Ancient Council, who um, saw in him the characteristics to carry their uh, guidance. As you know, they are the custodians of the community. And they saw with him, within him the characteristics that they could um, rely on and as you know, our Rastafari reggae artists are the missionaries <laughs> mm -hmm. who um, established the faith outside of the Grow Nation and the Nyabingi, you know, um, gatherings, establish it to the nation and to the world. And at this stage, um, being the parties who have, you know, um, grown up with the faith and, and this whole establishment, it makes sense to me that they would also be recognized in the administration because they are the ones that are out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, the pathways. They would be the apostles they if would one be the would apostles. In, the, in the Christian language, <laughs> so to speak. They right. are out there, and also most likely the ambassadors and the negotiators. And the negotiators. Yeah, with the, especially with the economics. You know, having been um, driven by their uh, contracts out, and, their, and their output, and their output because they are know? creating and they're also they're the ones creating the wealth and and controlling the wealth in well, some they, instances. Well, through their contractual with these third parties, the third parties, and they themselves may not be in the best uh, contractual <laughs> relationship, and that's where I think everything has merged now, where we need their service. Not simply as missionaries, but as business people, administrators, and, mm -hmm. you know, ambassadors. So All right. I just want to welcome back to the set Pastor Percival. <laughs> Pastor Percival is doing double duty this morning. He's host and he's chauffeur and he's daddy. It's not even double duty, it's triple duty. So he just dropped his children off. <laughs> and he's back. Pastor Percival. Um, the... Our, our, our very special guest has been royally introduced by Maxine, our sister Maxine, who is now family to us. So she has done the, the, the honors of introducing um, our guest. And may I just emphasize for you that this morning he's with us in his capacity as president in the office of the indigenous peoples of Jamaica, really. Yes. It is not just... Um, the Rastafarian community because other groups have been recognized as being indigenous. Yeah, and, and it's by blood as well as by um, culture, you know, because all of us have family members or we're in the bloodline of yes. all these indigenous groups. So even when we use 
the word indigenous is not outside of our actual self. It becomes one group. It becomes one group. <laughs> so it's by blood and election. By so blood and election and selection. And selection. All right. Um, mm. The president is about to just greet us. Greetings to you. Greetings to each and everyone in the name of the Most High, Imperial Majesty, Emperor the King Selassie Aja, Rastafari. Pleasant morning, and I'm honored being here on this program. Bless you. I thank you so much. Um, morning, welcome. Thank you very much. Good. We were we in preparation for you coming. Um, we we were talking about Judgment Yard, and I was wondering how did it get its name. Um, because we're talking about judging and what that means. Well, I can see, you know, you're a sagacious judge of a character. <laughs> and the judgment yard was um, named based upon Psalms 9. Okay. Where it says, His Majesty will establish a throne of judgment to judge his people. And I said, yeah, if it is throne of judgment, this is the yard, judgment yard. Okay. So right. based oh, on we don't get it now because you know that his, his throne is built up on righteousness and justice. Exactly. Psalms 89. Rastafari. And, and truth and, and mercy is part of his, his throne. Exactly. All right then. So I had one visit to judgment yard and the only thing I didn't see being done is judging. And I make that comment because we were talking about, we've always talked about justice as being not the narrow business of resolving disputes, but justice in the, in the true sense, involving how we relate to one another, dealing righteously and fairly with one another. So my one visit to Judgment Yard exposed me to a number of elements that I want to pull on with you. I saw people being fed. I myself was royally fed. <laughs> I left some with fruits. and stuff. I'm not telling you what I got. When you go, it's <laughs> 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 some serious. Because I pastor stew. will you arrive and ask nothing. for what I got. So no, sir. He, he no, needs sir. To get I am not. Own. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am not. I am not envious or anything. I just oh, wondered no. what envious. you have in terms of the stew because. In terms of history, my, don't my brother is now deceased. I beg you, Mr. President, don't follow him down that <laughs> rabbit hole. So, in the <laughs> earlier days, in, uh, talking about in the 70s and the 80s, <laughs> him on the back was every day, you know, the different things, and it was good. Good, good food. Up until I tell this time. you, yeah, man, it yes. is. So I know. That's why I asked her what she got when she said she was royally fed. My lips are sealed. Yeah, all right, I leave that up to you. So I go eat of my own provision. Absolutely, yes, you need to go and be fed. Yeah. But that's what I saw. I saw community. I saw fellowship. Yes. And we had a, a brief conversation about restorative justice. So I know there's justice in Judgment Yard, but I just I want to focus your attention um, on. How it is that you, in your office of president, seeks to impact community life? Thank you very much. A very beautiful question. Well, first, before I go any further, it is a part of our culture. It is of paramount importance to say a word of prayer to the Most High and give thanks unto the Supreme. So first, I'll say, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of a scornful. But his delight shall be in the Lord the Almighty, and on his laws he shall meditate day and night. He shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth its fruits in due seasons. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. For therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the presence of Rastafari, neither sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Rastafari know the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked man shall perish. Say the most I, ja? Rastafari. Peace, love, and blessing, and greetings once again. Now, the way about uniting the people through the office of the presidency, the indigenous office, given by the ancient council of the Nyabingatir Krasirin. First, I'll start with community service. And community service is of paramount importance because this is the order of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah representing its people in the diaspora worldwide based upon the fact that they're still in the manner of being in the slavitude realms. So, the servitude realms, excuse me. So, therefore, we start with the community. And being someone who are intimately involved in discussions, in, in, in matters, in activities in the community, it's like hands on the handle, boots on the ground. You're collecting the report from the people. 
you're there with the people, seeing the people, knowing the people's needs and all their welfare and well-being. You share all those stuff, their emotions, their feeling towards the oppressed system. Um, you're there with them. So we start with the community, with the people. Starting with the people, you can then teach the people of His Majesty. You can then teach the people of their ancient ways, being taught to us by our elders through the foundation such as the Naya Bingi Teokra Serene, through the Ail Selassie Jarastafari Royal Ethiopian Judah Catholic Church, 11 Welcome Avenue, um, Kingston 11, and through the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, True Divine Church of Salvation. They are all foundations being laid there and left for us to simply follow the pathway. And we'll start with ourselves on the third matter. You have to be someone of good and strict self-discipline high degree of love to deal with the people because they are being oppressed every day and you as a present leader for the people you need to be in the humblest state as for you to relate with the people to know the way forward rastafari i hear that and i understand it and i'm hearing a pattern of service yes exactly a pattern of service which is represented in terms of when jesus came he said i don't come to deal with those who don't save her they come to deal with those who need salvation and need to be broken about so you're That's following a right. pattern mm -hmm. there's a pattern that you're following in terms of what i call service because in order to lead people you have to serve them first exactly and that pattern can be described as as the rastafari family would say to fulfill the creed mm -hmm. and to fulfill the creed the creed is the hunger be fed the naked be closed the sick be nourished mm -hmm. the age protected mm -hmm. and the infants be cared for and fulfilling the creed it's the given duty of the most high from the household of the parents True. because these are duties for the mother and the father mm -hmm. therefore these are duties being handed down from their ancestors parents must be from the throne mm -hmm. so hence the first thing is to fulfill the creed and in doing so we share that hospitable um frequency between each and every one because it's one human family and we all need to be caring for each other True, that's so true so so when what you're saying is that if people seek to divide based on race or ethnicity is wrong because it's one human it's one human family and that is how it was created exactly okay. so division will only plunge us into damnation but when we're united we're much stronger mm -hmm. and as it says in the rastafari family one for all all for one his majesty is the great and ever-living king the umbrella which we all find ourselves beneath following the precepts and principle of Rastafari. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I want to switch to politics. Okay. Um, and politics because the office of the presidency, while there are spiritual elements to it, in the most part, it's a political office, would you say? Yes, certainly. All right. Um, and I do understand that the foundation the foundation of, of community life is service. Yes. But I'm curious as to um, your perspective on what the politics of the office involve and the style of politics um, that, that you would practice. Um, concerning um, political um, references, we've been taught from the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, the True Divine Church of Salvation, which is where the founder president, God and King Prince Manuel, have set the foundation based upon his knowledge and the best way forward. And it says, we the people above all things, we the people above all things stand governmentally, statically, sabbatically, and churchically. Concerning politics, we'll follow the pattern of the theocracy reign government which is still in line with the constitution of His Majesty, Ethiopia, in reference to Rastafari, and also the constitution of all the mansions concerning the Bobo Shanti mansion and the constitution of the Theocracy Reign mansion. Our divine realm is that concerning politics, our head, titular head of state, is His Majesty. We do not follow the colonial British monarch. So all our principles will be based upon principles being set and laid down by the church and the throne room of His Majesty. 
wherein the island of Jamaica has been revealed to um, possess a population majority of approximately 96.4% Ethiopian African descent. And whereas the presence of people of Ethiopian African descent in Jamaica, other former British colonial territories in the direct historical consequence of the African slave trade, the foundation of which was laid by Elizabeth I, um, of Tudor, Queen Elizabeth of England, with the granting of a British royal charter and a ship named SS Jesus of Lubeck to the renowned British patriarch and celebrated English pirate Sir John Arkins, who initiated the trade in human cargo with the capture of 300 Africans from the coast of Ghana in 1565. And whereas the African slave trade has been designated the burden of Western civilization for more than 200 years, whereas 450 years of racial commercial bondage and Western colonial exile under authority of the same British Royal Charter has since elapsed with no current historical evidence of demonstration to demonstrate, excuse me, to such burden to Western civilization has ever been lifted, seeing that the British throne and parliament has been morally negligent in failing to grant a repatriation act to return descendants of emancipated Ethiopian African people to their ancestral border on the principled decision taken to dismantle the vast British slave empire with the signing of an emancipation act in 1834. So right. with the Bobo Shanti Foundation, their uh, parliament structure set mm -hmm. and with the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress along with the neighboring theocracy, they are structures um, set for us to be in that manner to do the political sense of All the right. people. Right. Thank you very much. So we're gonna we're gonna take a seven break. Yeah. Yes, we will take a station break at this point, and then when we return, we're gonna look at how well as we march towards constitutional reform in Jamaica, how we will seek now to exert some influence on the process so that the 95% Africans in Jamaica can see themselves represented in what's to come. Exactly. So we Thank please you. stay with us. We'll be right back. Our guest in the house is the president himself, Sisla Kolonji, accompanied by Miss Maxine Stowe, who is family to you already. And Pastor Percival and myself are guiding you through the morning. This is the Morning Connection. We'll be right back. Both, he, both Leonard Howell Marcus Garvey and His Imperial Majesty were born in the 1890s. This is right after the carving up of Africa, because once we were emancipated as a people, then the great colonial powers sat down in Berlin and, and a divided and decided who would get where, where and who would have, in yeah. the African continent. So even us in our right to return, it was abrogated because the place that we were to return to as a freed people mm -hmm. was immediately was divided carved up, up yeah, you know, said. and the only uh, state that, wasn't, was, that Ethiopia. Was, was Ethiopia, Ethiopia again, yeah. which is significant to our history and it's also significant to the role and the, um, the, the political, if you want to say, development of his imperial majesty. So mm -hmm. how will all of them are contemporaries of each other dealing with being born for emancipation and being born to defend Africa. So I'm seeing three strands or, th or three streams of activity running concurrently and they seem to have merged in the office of the president. I'm seeing Marcos Garvey being very political and, and focused on both the economics and the politics, ownership of your destiny. I'm seeing his imperial majesty looking at the divine order of things and and at, we talk about the, the theocratic reign i'm seeing that superstructure sitting above it and i'm seeing leonard howell focusing on the spiritual because man was born free was meant to be free and those three strands have come down and they are now sort of focused in the energies of the president the sizzler <laughs> the victorious kalanji <laughs> See, yeah, I, and all of them I studied were, <laughs> a little yeah. bit there. And uh, as you described, all of them were uh, interested in the, the economics because they all know that you know, political freedom without economics... Without means, is it, empty. Is empty. Faith without Faith. works right. <laughs> is dead. But I think it's significant that they all three were um, our contemporaries. Our contemporaries, yes. You know, uh, coming out of the universe and did carry and um, merge and were, you know, peers almost on a level 
of this experience that we are now grounded in. So leading up to um, 1961, 60, yes. um, 1958 was one a very um, important ground nation in Victoria's, uh, Victoria Park, now William Grant Park, where the Rastafari community, um, one of the leaders being King, King Emmanuel, was making provisions for um, this negotiation that was going on about the independent Jamaica or the federal federation, federation. Or whatever, that in that negotiation as would be now that the rights of the African within the right of return would be in, incorporated in the constitution and so those discussions um, with Norman Manley and um, M.G. Smith and Bustamante Bust no he no, wasn't in it actually it was really um, Manley, Manley and, and M.G. Smith you know mm. They um, created this opportunity and recognized the right of the African to determine their destiny. And that is where the mission to Africa came, where they set, you know, set up this mission to go to five African states um, to negotiate what would be the basis of such a return. And that trip occurred and it, it bore fruit but then Norman Manley lost the election and Bustamante took a... So the politics intervened. The politics intervened. And, and the ground shifted. Right. And um, it is at that mm -hmm. stage also that His Imperial Majesty had requested of Jamaica to become a founding member of the Organization of African Unity because it was formed in 1963. So he was recognizing that a lot of the nations in the Commonwealth were gaining you know, we're in this mode of gaining independence. We're being cut free by the Queen. And recognize Jamaica. So to fight, fight. Yeah, yes. and recognize Jamaica as being an important, um, an important state, right? And so, you know, a lot of, I'm just setting the stage. Yes, for yes. The and president to, I think to, he's preparing to himself to take um, the horn. Where we are now, yeah. as you know, last couple of weeks, the vestiges of the queen were here. Her, um, her, her, descendants, her, de her descendants. Her descendants. <laughs> oh, wow. Her descendants. Her descendants were and here. The and we've seen some interesting things happening in the aftermath that I want us to talk about. So let me plant the seed. The Commonwealth and this bid by Jamaica at the point as we are seeking to distance ourselves from the queen, this bid by Jamaica to take leadership, to be the secretary general of the Commonwealth. Um, Jamaica has put forward a candidate, uh, and, and that is a, a matter to be discussed. What is the relevance of the Commonwealth, this collection of, I, yesterday I was calling them a survivor's club, this 54 countries that have continued in some relationship. It's like hostages keeping in touch with each other after they've been set free. What is the value of it in today's thinking? Mr. President, it is your time. But um, may I ask you to emphasize as you speak to us, just to, 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 to emphasize how you see this merger of politics, economics, and spirituality being reflected in the next round of negotiations because we are moving to constitutional reform by exactly. fire or by force. It exactly. is happening, so we need to be prepared. Thank you very much. Well, as I've said, the foundations are being laid by our ancestors. We are just aligning ourselves to follow through. And i like to just make mention of a few um, directives from the Nyabingi and from the Bobo Shanti and also the Judah Coptic. We're in which I've now amalgamated all these principles and all these constitutions in one to best serve the public of black people. First, I'd like to start with the Bobo Shanti. As where you say, we're going through the spiritual aspect and the political aspect. Now, the membership, the Bobo Shanti, all who desire to become members of the association must abide by the following principles. And without the principles, we'll be in darkness. That they recognize 
His Majesty Haile King Selassie I, and the Most Right King Emmanuel for the foundation of the Bobo Shanti, who is Melchizedek the High Priest of Salem, that they abide by the rules of the Sabbath and the Nyabingi had stated or foresaid, that in addition they must attend the Sabbath services unless they are ill, and the Nyabingi services also, that in addition and specifically they must dress in a dignified manner when attending church services and the brethren are to be attired in a rope and turban and sisters are to cover their heads with a fall and wear robes that cover their ankles that members are not allowed to carry any weapons of violence that all members must live in peace and love with each other that no member is allowed to participate in politics yet we the people above all organizations stand politically mm -hmm. okay that all members must work voluntarily for their association that the transgression of lying defaming tail bearing and stealing are strictly prohibited that all members must show respect to the banner of the association that all members must work in unity loyalty and cooperation with each other in order to make the motherland of Africa free and to bring forth freedom redemption international repatriation for Africans in the diaspora now in saying that, in maintaining that for the foundation of the EABIC, there is a parliament concerning the governance. And that parliament of the association shall consist of 33 members. That's the principle being laid down by Bobo Shanti Prince Emmanuel, that the parliament shall be the governing body of the association. In saying that, to say this, also with the El Selassie, Jarastafari, Royal Ethiopian Judah Coptic Church, they have laid the foundation from that mansion concerning the Ethiopian alternative union policy, where in which there should have been um, a bill passed for such. It was neglected and ushered out based on the fact that we were using marijuana. So known to the fact that the marijuana in this time is not with that Rems of has been decriminalized. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are here to push forward with all these principles, guidelines towards the redemption of Ethiopia, Africa. Whereas the people human rights referendum is urgently warranted today to establish the indigenous sovereignty of the people in Jamaica with religious and cultural autonomy. By definition, a republic is a form of government system which recognizes the supreme authority in the voice of the people in collective security. So Jamaican politicians cannot bring forth any referendum to dispose or remove the absentee British monarchy. Hence, due to the fact that the Jesuit taught politicians are paid political puppets, actors and agents employed to uphold the Jesuit status quo set here, they neither have the moral capacity nor intellectual ability to fulfill the UN treaty obligations as witnessed after 59 years of maladministration and negligence. Therefore, by choosing to abolish the Jamaican constitution unanimously will stand as an expression of the will of the people to dismiss the Privy Council, Jamaica's Prime Minister democratically, while removing the absentee British Queen as head of state and shutting down the Jesuit influence institution of Parliament simultaneously. This people human right referendum shall serve as lawful constructive notice to dissolve the office of the Queen's the Governor General representative immediately so that we the people can lawfully inherit the island of Jamaica as private indigenous territory under Article 23, 21, 3 of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights Charter and lawfully install a new debt-free constitutional republic form of democratic government in human rights solidarity with the first president of the new debt-free Republic of Jamaica officially. Since 63% of the voting population have no confidence in the political leadership of Jesuit taught politicians. Then we must endeavor to secure and protect our own indigenous interests with human rights decision as unlawful taxation without human rights representation is a fundamental basis for international political transformation. All right. Okay. So you have yeah, you have said a lot of things there and I'm I'm going to pull out a few strands just for discussion. The first thing, and I love it, I know Pastor Percival and I would be in agreement with this. The first thing is recognizing that the spirituality of the people, the freedom to practice your religion, is an important and a necessary foundation for society. You've started with the Bobo Shanti and their commitment to observance of the Sabbath, good moral conduct, and so on. Um, Percival, what's your vote? 
vote? Yes. I will say vote. I'm I'm <laughs> listening, uh, but but I I find it so instructive that the first document that Sizzler Kolanji referred to, um, you could have taken that out of a Seventh Day Adventist <laughs> church in terms of of what has happened in terms of. Well, Seventh Day Adventist it's because it says Sabbath. Sabbath, Sabbath. But outside and even some of that, of really, any 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 church yeah, that that in is regards to focused it. So you're on saying, God. So what puts you're God saying, at the center of the, of what the, is the society. So, so what you're saying is that fear of God, the Almighty, is important in terms of anything that flows, whether it be political or economic, economic Everything. or absolutely. And ecclesiastically, that's where we choose our Godhead. Mm-hmm. Per to say, we we'll remove the queen as our godhead and oh. serve our indigenous godhead because based upon our principles and guidelines, and even so from the Bible, Israel king is Israel's God. And all our prophecies mm-hmm. and all our cultures concerning welfare, well-being, the way we eat, drink, mm-hmm. came yes, out of yes. the, the Almighty. Yeah. And the Bible itself refers to Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. And the All king the of Ethiopia is his majesty. And he, he had visited so Jamaica coming to that on now. this month, the 21st of this month. Yes. So everything is part and parcel. So the, d- d- the disciplinary action and principles of the Ethiopia Africa Club International Congress and also of the Nyabingi Theocracy reign and also of the El Selassie Jarastafari Royal Ethiopian Judah Catholic Church. It's part and parcel of the duties should be kept by us, the 94 percent African descent in Jamaica in order to remove the British colonial who have had the children of Africa in their territories of slavery. So I want to sort of put an emphasis on that now because in the negotiations to come we already know that majority of Jamaicans are saying we've had enough of the Queen as our head of state. You're making it clear that given our history and who we are in terms of our identity when we remove the queen jamaicans should be considering replacing the queen with the 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 his his emperor the crown head his majesty uh, his majesty and the case that you are laying out for that has everything to do with our point of origin um who we are in exactly because general um genealogically we are connected to his majesty based upon the cabernegas and based upon the fact that the Roman Catholic had taken away children from Jerusalem, and we, 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 we are very well of the knowledge that they are here in the Caribbean. Yes, yes. So people from Jerusalem are here in the Caribbean, especially Jamaica. People from Africa, they are here in the Caribbean. You can, for evidence, you can check downtown. We are from a royal indigenous nation of kings and queens. In Jamaica, you have King Street, Queen Street, <laughs> Princess yes. Street, Prince Street, and yes. for the likes. There are Therefore, memories we have kept, we are we have kept the bloodline of the throne of King David. We are the bloodline of the Messiah. In the Latin language, Jesus Christ. In our language, Hebrew Israelite language, Yashua Mashayak. So we need to stand and represent. So we're not disrespecting any office of the government in no sense far be it from me to speak bad about my people and their government but we need to align ourselves with the almighty and based on the fact that we are the children of the transatlantic slave trade and the british government need to pass the repatriation act to return the black sons and daughters to africa and with the same like the African government should be having dialogues with the government of the Western diaspora for the resettlement, the return and the resettlement so of the children. That brings me to, to the next um, topic for discussion. In 1962, 1958, coming up, Jamaica reached out to Africa through the mission and so on. And Africa responded warmly. But we have not had an explosion of great relationship in the intervening years. I'm asking you now as president, as we create a platform to build that relationship going forward, are there any specific um, ambitions or, or strategies that you would propose to bring not just the Rastafarian community, but Jamaica as a whole into a deeper relationship with Africa? Because I think Africa is now Certainly. in a greater state of readiness. Yes, based upon the Charter of the Human Rights Declaration, um, it very well stated in one of the articles where the state should provide finance for all these activities. And it should be championed by the Jamaican government because they are a member state of the United Nations. And 
you're a member state of the United Nations, you should also adhere to the principles of the indigenous people's declaration. Mm -hmm. So there are set ways in getting all these things done concerning the referendum. So we need to have a courtesy call to the government of Jamaica, having them with the knowledge that we are now in the process of removing the queen and we the people We'll structure ourselves based upon the principles and the precepts of the foundation, the grassroots, the indigenous foundation of Jamaica black people. I love it. I want to hear your views on the, the continued relevance of the Commonwealth. Jamaica has put forward our own uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs to be the Secretary General. Now, it could be that it is a very good strategy to take charge of those resources and to move it in a direction that meets the needs of our people. But it could also be just walking in the same vein of continuing to foster a relationship that has not worked to our greatest advantage. What do you think is the Commonwealth of Nations a relevant institution for Jamaica to participate in? Well, it is always relevant to have connections. I would say yes, <laughs> but properly Network. grafted um, structure in uniting your kingdoms. And without this, without, without, with no disrespect, I do think that the Commonwealth is just an extended arm based upon the strategy of the government having us in slavery. Same as how you have the Commonwealth, that is how you have the Naya Bingi Theocracy reign. Mm. And that is how you have the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. And that is how you have the Eid Selassie, Jarastafari, Royal Ethiopian Judah Coptic Church. All foundation praising His Majesty as titular head of state and head of church. These foundations are set to collect the people and teach them the way forward, their African ways, their African spirituality. Yes, they say Rastafari is a movement, but it's a way of life. This is what life had taught us, as the Majesty said. So the Commonwealth is set to unite and keep a set of people with their um, realms to that elite status in that realms of servitude. Yes, all due respect, but we are here to receive the people, and it is no time for both the Commonwealth through the um, kingdom of the British monarch to hand over all black people to the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, to the Eight Selassie Jarastafara Ethiopian Judah Coptic Church, and the Naya Bingi Theocracy Reign. We are here sitting and we are waiting with all due principles and precepts of the throne to teach the people the way forward. And it is for the Jamaica government to champion the cause of repatriation as the fact that they are a member state of the United Nation. Very well said. Um, and just oh, one question. Go ahead, Percy. You speak about handing over, but we as a people can decide to move. <laughs> oh, you're right. Thank you very mind. much. That, no, uh, that's I'm just saying. I because repatriation. <laughs> oh, because you read we, my mind. we as a because you see, <laughs> an important part of what happens is one man said emancipate yourself from mental slavery. So if we decide to move and say we enough and the people going one way, there's no way that you can hold the people back. So you begin with that. So if we decide to move, then the leaders who are not coming, we have to follow. And one man said, you are leading if you are influencing people. But if people break the influence that you have over them and move, you're good. You're good. Yes. So when you say hand over, I am just trying to there's understand. Some, We're coming there's some symbolism. In terms of There's some of symbolism that. to the language. The break. <laughs> yeah. But if, if the producer would allow us, because we, we could wrap up this point and then... Um, there is some symbolism in the call to hand over. Yes. And and I respect that. I think we must call on them to hand over. But if they choose not to, we're in an Esther moment now. Mm -hmm. If they choose not to, and we have seen that they have delayed and they will choose not to, there has to be the alternative because your salvation will come from somewhere else and they will suffer the destruction. So I want to talk about tribal sovereignty. Not so long ago, our own prime minister addressed the Maroons as a separatist faction and made a bold statement, an impassioned statement in Parliament that not one inch of Jamaica will be ceded to separatists under his watch. Now, the issue of, cyber, of tribal sovereignty, which is tied up in that declaration of indigenous peoples from the United Nations, has, in my mind, given us the platform for what Pasta is speaking of. If they fail to do the right thing, we are free to make the choices that are important for us. So I'd love to hear you speak on the alternative. Because when they delay or when they fail to, we keep moving, don't we? Exactly. 
Well, we're not a nation of crime and violence, as Thank we are the people who have long um, written the scriptures, where in which the same British government translated and called it the Bible. But then, as His Majesty, we should all know that we the people, above all organizations, stand governmentally, statically, churchically, parliamentally, sabbatically, and ayabingi. Now, as you said before concerning the tribal Sovereignty, issues, yeah. yes. if the Prime Minister should say that the Maroons have no such sovereignty, that would be contrary to the fact of um, Jamaica being independent. Because if you said we are an independent nation, we should break away from the Queen. Therefore, you shouldn't be speaking down on one of the tribe in the country. Yeah. As for the fact that Jamaican public, they should know that Miguel Collins was given a title crown from Ghana. I've visited Ghana, I've done two shows in Ghana, and upon leaving the country, the chief came to the hotel and crowned me the first royal crown prince of the Chirana throne and pioneer for the repatriation movement. And I was given um, lands such as a gold mine in Ghana and the title crown. I brought that same chief here to the Nyabinga Tirkas in, in Scotch Pass and I brought that same chief to Bobo Shanti. Now, the Bobo Shanti is part and parcel of the Jamaica nation because when you had the persecution with the Roman Catholics, these people left Jerusalem and went to deeper Africa. They are the same people forming themselves just to avoid the Roman persecution. They formed the, that dynasty where the same kings and queens of the Ashanti tribes descended. So the Ashanti tribes are very much the people and the, 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 the leaders, rulers in Jamaica. So we know as a people should let the government of Jamaica know that if we weren't uh, an indigenous set of people such as the Maroons, there wouldn't have been an established treaty. And if you should say we have no authority concerning the land. You are just merely saying we should destroy the treaty between the Maroons and the British. And, the British. and in destroying the treaty, that would furtherly bring us to where you say we can do things by ourselves, by ourselves. as a people. Um, I, it's time Great. for us to take the break, and I believe it's a fitting point because Jamaicans listening need to understand that you have authority and you have power, you have rights. And there are some decisions up ahead of us which will require great fortitude. So thank you for sharing that. Let's You're take welcome. our break and then um, when we come back, we'll just wrap up and say our goodbyes to the president and his team um, because the, um, our digital literacy segment is going to follow in short order. Good morning and welcome back to the Morning Connection. You know, during the break, we sometimes dive deeper than we do on air. And this was one such moment because Pastor Percival, rather surprisingly, began to communicate with the artist in the sizzler. Of course, he's here as president. <laughs> so we're going to try and pull him back from the, the, the um, alluring cosmic and get back now to the business of Rastafarian Month. For this last segment, I would like us to speak a little bit about what lies ahead. Um, I think the president laid a very commanding track in terms of the politics. Um, I understand, too, that tied up in the politics is the economics of making sure that the creed to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, I know that it has to be met. So I'm, I'm sensing, uh, Mr. President, that in the next round, we are going to see a lot more activism in those areas. Exactly. In terms of the economy. In terms of the economics. Because and as, as a wise lady sitting beside you said, you know, we struggled for a long time to get the recognition. But yes. then when we reached there, we never have no money. Because the, the, the <laughs> system still hold on to the money. Yes. So you are very much into... Because she, she put on the table the idea in terms of the creative that there needs to be a way that what has happened with the music internationally comes back to the people so it can drive economic change and reform. What and do you think about that? And here you have a very good example. 
I myself as an artist. Yeah. Because the music is lucrative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've made um, lots of um, monies from the music, a lot of not just money, you know. But the basic ingredients for the reggae music came out of the natural indigenous culture of Rastafari from the people of the island of Jamaica who are descendants from the Africans. So therefore, I personally took it as my part uh, and whose lot it has fallen mm-hmm. to administrate your your upon is. the government of black people, poor people, and put your money where your mouth is. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I'm in the streets singing for the people. They have nothing to do with writing a song or even a line in <laughs> the music. Yet they purchased your songs. They supported you at the stage shows. Yet there are set foundations in the highland to direct these people to their African spiritual ways and we are not doing it. Therefore, some of us, we're not much better than the politicians. Than the politicians. Tell so, me a b- little bit about the trust because you have to have a vehicle through which you collect and distribute the benefits of um, all the All right, I would let um, Mac, um, the ancient council yes. has designated the Millennium Council to do a lot of work. Ah. So that question, I think it would be best for Maxine to answer that question concerning the trust of Rastafari. And then, Sister Max, you could lead into what are the next steps in the month. Aside from the visit that Pastor Percy has commissioned, there will be a royal visit in proper vestments. Yes. Um, so that will happen. We have to put a date to that one, but Certain. tell us a little bit about the trust. Yeah, well, the Rastafari Trust Fund um, was instituted in 2011 as the outcome of negotiations in relation to indigenous intellectual property rights and ownership. Rastafari community, I think, if I dated it from the early, the late 70s and the early 80s, certainly after the transition of Bob Marley, is when Rastafari culture went you know to the zenith in oh terms my. of her uh lifestyle companies and trade and festivals and you know huge huge um big commerce, business big big business and so the community has um talked about their intellectual property rights in terms of managing it it started actually with negotiations with um bob marley and uh, as he was ascending and certainly the whalers as you know we all know were the pioneers some of the early pioneers um gospel mm-hmm. missionaries <laughs> apostles mm-hmm. the apostles so at this stage we are um you know jamaica as a whole has not protected its people it's not just rastafari so this is jamaica in the sense of government institutions government that would institutions, normally carry out right. those functions we are more l- like fertilizer to global industries and global music forms mm-hmm. now we are being challenged as to whether we own what we even create in reggae you know like um, big discussion now because a, 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 a white American group won the reggae Grammy which signaled yeah. you know uh, uh, in the consciousness of the people what is happening like you know so even yesterday we were up at Judgment Yard and a uh, artists with white artists with Rastafari locks came and sat at the feet of um, Sizzla and was strumming you know mm-hmm. and I'm looking at the whole thing and saying it seems to be free but that needs to be administrated right and so <laughs> you, you know what I mean that's he, where the trust fits in now yes and even he was directing to the individual you know we own the locks and we own what you can do or we are supposed to tell you. It seemed to be an organic discussion, but it has to rise to the level of policy. Right. You understand? Mm-hmm. So this is where the Rastafari Trust Fund is situated, that we needed to have now a vehicle that we were given um, instructions by the indigenous rights as to how to set up, set up that vehicle. And that vehicle has also inspired similar vehicles in uh, South Africa, and we, um, the president is, uh, will be working on uh, a mission to Ethiopia where a similar trust will, will, be, be, established will, there. will be established there. So can I say in very clear terms then that the trust is open for business and that those who have benefited for decades 
from the the glory and the wealth of the culture now have a vehicle into which they can put something back for the benefit of the community definitely and the goodwill that we have generated is even bigger than what people owe us absolutely and this this um, group of just soldiers who won the Grammy I am sure that in the spirit of even just the music that they have have chosen that they are ready to give back yeah, I, but I, it has to be policy you know that and that's is it. and that's it's our not, job it should not be right well, wouldn't exactly. that be our job yeah that's our job that's our job that's it. all right tell me a little bit more about the rest of the month and then um you know we don't want to wrap up and take our leave but <laughs> that time always comes <laughs> right well um he has a the president has a speech about the month so ah, excellent so back to the president then thank you Oh, thank you very much. And before going into the month, I would like to expound on the trust. Mm -hmm. Now, c concerning the trust, there are principles set where the foundations of His Majesty concerning the Bobo Shanti and the Theocracy and the Judah Coptic, they are bank accounts mm -hmm. before even be being established before the trust. 2011 so before 2011. I'm the treasurer for the Naya Binge Theocracy reign. And I'm also the treasurer for the Il Selassie Judah Coptic. Concerning monies going into the accounts for His Majesty's Foundation, they are persons um, being designated with their signatures. Without these three persons, no money will be dispersed. Mm -hmm. So, based upon the principle of the trust, anything going out of the foundation must be authorized by the priest, by the, the treasurer, and the secretary, and the family. Mm -hmm. to oversee order. In other what's words, going on. So concerning it doesn't matter what trust or where the trust is at, there yes. are set principles of the foundation that will oversee the trust. the trust. So the trust will still be administered by the priest and the elders, ancient council of all the foundation. Excellent. Now concerning the month of um, April. His Majesty, April, um, I would like to start with this, the mandate for Rastafari and I being a theocracy before going into the month because going into the month, we should be practicing and keeping the precepts of mm -hmm. the foundation. So concerning the being a man, a Rastaman is an ancient, someone who is at least 60 years of age with 40 years reputable treading on the, in the faith. The ancient council previously known as the Assembly of Elders has been established since the foundation of the Nibing Order in 1947. The ancient council has been functioning as the vanguard and custodian of the Rastafari movement here in Jamaica since the leadership of founder patriarch the Right Honorable Leonard P. Howell. The ancient Council was revised in 1998 and 2003 with the structuring of a working administration administration for accountability and responsibility. The administration, the ancient council, consists of 24 active ancients who are still among the congregation of the Naya Bingi. 13 members are responsible for presiding over meetings once a month to deal with the overall administration of the Rastafari movement globally. Administrative post, the chair, the coordinator, the secretary. All for one, one for all. Working in this manner, there will be no failure. The vision statement for the Naya Bingi Theocracy reign, I and I claim victory through humility, discipline, and perseverance with the mind, what the mind conceive and believe it can achieve through love, wisdom, commitment, focused action, and overstanding. The mission statement for the Rastaman is the Council of Ancients stands as the, the vanguard and custodian for the Rastafari movement globally. The Council of Ancients takes it as a prime duty to see to it that the children of the slave trade are adequately returned and resettled in the land from whence they were taken, Ethiopia, Africa. The duties, the Council of Ancient takes it as a prime duty to centralize the Rastafari movement under the banner according to the constitution written by His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Selassie in 1934 and the revision 1951. The Council of Ancient takes it as a prime duty to authorize, advise, and observe any and every administration carried out in the name of Rastafari. The Council of Ancients will continue to make contact with all Rastafari organizations to have a consultant from each of them appointed to the Council. And once this is done, a global call will be made to all consultants to deliberate and establish one program of action for a global Rastafari community, hence the referendum. So this month of April now is being designated by the Rastafari family. Um, 
there is a lot more to be communicating with but for the most part we've reached out to the Bobo Shanti, the Judah Coptic, Maxine herself, reach out to a lot more persons, you know, Rasprofi and all that. So this month, you know, um it was the recording of man's activity throughout his life and his outstanding performances in abiding by the laws and instruction laid down by his creator, ancestors and elders that have caused us to be the true narrators of such abundant wealth of knowledge that is presently the prime source of reference today. Therefore, we continue to have recorded the constant agitation of repatriation for our black brothers and sisters in slavery today in having a designated month of celebration for Rastafari, Emperor Celestia, It will further enhance us in the light of a new day and the renaissance for black people worldwide to unite and be of one or a whole black family. We see this as a month of spectacular and radiant knowledge sharing based on natural historical fact that is the first month of the 13th Hebrew Israelite month, the month of Abib. Mm -hmm. Right, based upon the Bible. This is very wholesome. We must now step forward with the zeal of Ethiopia Africa to put these significant dates to collective use and continue with the same power and will to have that have caused these days in our month of April to be of such significance and be the same in time to come. Hence we have the month of April being designated by the Rastafari family. A month of celebration, administration and the list goes on, etc. Thank you. Oh. Happy you. Rastafari month. You know, he to said, you also, as he Happy goes, Rastafari month. As a pastor, moved internationally. One of the things I've said to people, the ultimate return of the Lord Jesus Christ in all of his glory will happen mm. when the race of black people come back to the fore. It started with us. Yes. It will end with us. It will end with us. So Bless when it. we come back to a knowledge of who we are, and what it is that God through his infinite wisdom has given to us, then he will emerge. Thank you very much. I could not have said it better. Thank you very much, all of you. We didn't get to hear the drums unless you want to do a slight thing now as we are taking or as you are taking Eli <laughs> Rastafari, Prince and Princess shall come out of Egypt, and we Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands and out unto Jah. O Jah of Ethiopia, his own divine majesty, Emperor Alexi Lassia, that Iris come to all dwelling parts of righteousness. Lead us, help us to forgive that we must be forgiven. Teach us love and loyalty on earth as in Zion. And your serve thy wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do thy will. Thy blessings to us, the hungry be fed, the naked be clothed, the sick be nourished, the aged protected, and the infants be cared for. Deliver us from the hands of our enemies, that we may be fruitful in these last days, when our enemies have passed and decayed, depths of the seas, Depths of the earth, bowl of the beast. Oh, give us all a place in thy kingdom for Ivan, and Iva. Elamai, Selassie, Ja. Rastafari. Rastafari. Say the new name, Jagat, and it terrible amongst them. He then no like Johnny. Say the new name, Jagat, and it terrible amongst them. He then no like Johnny. New name. Said it's a new name, precious name, new name, Jarastafari. Said it's a new name, precious. precious name, new name, Jarastafari. And when you call him Rastafari, watch a week or tremble, he then no like Johnny. Ah, when you call him Rastafari, what shall we call tremble? He then no like Johnny in a whole amount Zion. In a whole amount Zion. Babylon, you gone. 
Babylon gone, gone. Oh, and they increase that trouble in the world most high. Many are they that rise up against I soul. Many are they that say they don't know help in Eilis Lassie. But Eilis Lassie is our shield. Eilis Lassie is our glory. And lift our fire in our head. I call unto the most high and he hears out of the holy hill. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of enemies who have set themselves around me about. Arise, O Rastafari. Save thy children. Call Rastafari. I've broken the cheek of the ungodly and broken the teeth of all those enemies. Selassie, I bless and keep you always. Ja, Rastafari. Blessings. Precious, in the name of Rastafari. Blessings. I'm honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I could not have. Judgment Yard, headquarters for the month. Every every evening, every night. Every All right. We're going into our break now, so I can actually get a picture with Sister Maxine. In all of our glory. Welcome back to the Morning Connection. Thank you so much. I hope you have been enjoying the morning's offerings as much as we here on site are enjoying it. We've just said our goodbye to um, the Rastafarian royalty that we had in the house. And we are very pleased to fill this chair now with fresh royalty. And his name says it all. Professor Golding, welcome. Morning. Morning. Nice to be here. Um, Thank yes, you. morning. Nice to be here. Yeah. Thank you also for patiently waiting on us. We would have started a bit earlier, but we do go until 10. And if you were the wise man that I think you are, you would have apportioned a little more time for us in your diary. I know you are busy, but we won't keep you for very long. But long enough for you to deliver yourself of all that you have prepared for us. Sure. <laughs> Being pregnant with the information. Mm. That's why he wanted you to <laughs> stay away. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning, Welcome good morning. to the morning connection. <laughs> the two of you have some history now. I want to hear of it. <laughs> in due course, I want to hear oh of it. Oh, my Lord. Um, so this is um, the first episode in a series that uh, the Morning Connection has decided to host. It is on the subject of digital literacy, recognizing that as the world around us becomes increasingly um, electronic and based in the metaverse... As the universe becomes the metaverse, we need to be more knowledgeable about how to navigate this space. So this episode is going to look at issues, well, concepts such as artificial intelligence. We want to look at coding, the language of the universe, how it is built. We want to look at how people move around in, in this space. And the real idea is to sensitize our audience on how to acquire the skill set for a variety of activities. Professor Paul Golding comes to us from the College of Business Management at the University of Technology in Jamaica. He is well known as a, um, a commentator on things to do with the area of technology and the last exciting piece that I read from him had to do with um, misinformation, the lies that we get told and how those lies are converted into policy. Um, which made him the perfect choice Misin to start our misinformation, series. Misinformation, misinformation disinformation, disinformation, propaganda, all of that. Yes, it was like lies and how, how, how leaders lie to, to, to bring the nation behind them with the different choices. At the time you were writing on the war in Ukraine. Right. Well, how are you feeling as you, your theories that were in your article? You're, you're seeing them played out now, aren't yeah, you? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing there's has nothing changed. new under the sun, Prof. No, there's absolutely nothing new as it was song. in the beginning so yeah. it shall be in the we end we just recycle it and give it a new name a new name <laughs> 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 that is true yes, yes. <laughs> I'm a player the, what happened there yeah. but well, so we know he was enjoying the music <laughs> you know yeah. but you know as you as you say that I reflect on the deception of Eve did God say it, was, it, it is not it is not the truth it is a truth personality thing mix it to make it go that's what it is isn't it yes you 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 flavor it yes man mm -hmm. you flavor it in a way which is what continues to happen you will not surely die yes you will be like, like god yes oh so that is part of what you're talking about and from the beginning I mm -hmm. from the beginning so are we mm -hmm. gods of this universe the virtual world how is it built we um, built it did we really build it no but before I start, yes. I need to do a public service announcement. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I was asked to hail up my squash crew for Mutech. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> that is it's a not. tremendous public it service it announcement. If not, I, 
<laughs> you could not go back to university. <laughs> to this. You can I, share I can't, mine. I, I can't return. So, um, <laughs> I, I please sure. call them by name. Give them. Give us their weight, their age, their <laughs> <laughs> how skilled are they? That's squad. misinformation. Yes. Or disinformation. Oh, that, that would be misinformation <laughs> to talk about their skills. <laughs> <laughs> they, probably they don't want you to talk about their no. skills. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> At which point, then I can say good morning to Professor John Lindo. I'm sure his skills are improving yes. on the squash court. <laughs> we should do a squash and Yui um, tournament. And you take. Uh, yeah, yeah. At uh, UWE and UTEC, yes, tournament. Yes. At UWE, they've had some recently refurbished courts. At as, as, told, yes. as just told, yeah. yeah. I need to go take a look. All right, the producer is going to set it up. Okay. Then you, we will re report on the outcome of that tournament on this program. So your squash buddies will get full mention. Very they can good. start Very shaping good. up. Now that they know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's a national radio, international radio. Absolutely. Yes. There are pictures to show for it. <laughs> All right, so you have taken care of the PSA. So yes. now, what about this universe? Did we really build it? Are we gods in this universe? No, I think, truth be told, is that we are pawns in this universe. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, because mm -hmm. I don't think m most of us knows exactly what is going on in terms of how this universe is being built and maybe the word should not be built is how it's being is, is how it's evolving evolving okay so it's yeah. organic somewhat yes so it the the universe itself is evolving and as a result of that even even the term the metaverse is is part it, of it, evolution yes it because we the, the term does not have a full and uh, concrete meaning as yet True. It is evolving. Um, persons have an idea as to what this metaverse should look like. Mm -hmm. so have some idea as to um, how it should work, mm -hmm. but we really don't know how it should work, how it will work. Okay. Right. And there's a lot of technologies involved in it, and those technologies are also evolving. Evolving. So you really mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm. exactly what the metaverse is, and because you have so many things evolving. You have persons who may have a little bit more information, and what they do is to use that, as we call, information asymmetry, in which you have more information than me, and mm. therefore you start selling me something that I really don't want. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that is part of what is going on. If, if so you're kind of inviting me now to say that the, well, the metaverse is a, is a, um, a trademark name, Right. for just a world of unmanageable data that people are seeking to harness. But because the data represents information about human activity, it seems to me that the virtual world is really the consciousness of man mm -hmm. trapped in some kind of space. Well, the Because it, it, it flows out of our conscious thinking and, and doings, and we feel something, we write it, it is captured somewhere. Just this morning, I was reading um, about Twitter. Twitter regards itself as a warehouse of I historical data. Hmm. And so it's capturing what you wrote in the past. It's preserving it in the present and leaving it for the future. And it is the collective consciousness of, of human endeavors that is being represented in this space, which means it carries both our good thoughts and our bad thoughts. Which will be used against us in the future? Um, at the turn of the century, um, it became the age of big data. Right. Right, in which data then become, became the fuel mm -hmm. of an economy. Right. And the expectation is that, in the, well, if not now, but in the future, persons who harness and own the data control the world. Will have control. But that's, doesn't that's it doesn't it take you back to that um, the, the, this this well it is pretty much a, a truism that knowledge is power. Yes. And that's not a new sentiment. It's not a new sentiment. It's just maybe as one would put it on steroids now because so much data and everything can be harnessed and and used. When when you look, for instance, at algorithms, algorithms if. If I go on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. there's going to be recommendations. 
that you uh, yes it for happens me to all watch, the time mm-hmm. yeah. right and then based on what i watch there'll be further More recommendations yes. as to what i should watch right so and it goes on and on and on and it happens not just on on youtube everything it, it happens on all of the platforms so then the if we were talking if we wanted to give it a definition this universe or this world is a combination of data which is just information loads and loads of raw information so it's a combination of information and the systems that mine or analyze or pull from that information would that be a fair summary i think that would be a fair summary but the the thinking you know and 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 i want to say the thinking is that these two worlds the physical world Mm -hmm. and the virtual world should merge that's the thinking into one um, as it is now, these two worlds are, are separate. So you have a, a online personality versus a physical personality. That be your avatar. <laughs> it could well, be your avatar. It could be your avatar, and, and avatar is being pushed as as part of this. So this is you. Mm-hmm. As it is now, we have a different personality generally online than we have. That's so true. Um, you heard in, the term catfishing. Yes. So is that an absence of integrity? Uh, no, I'm pushing just, the dialogue a little yes. bit because you're you're raising some real weighty matters that I think um, as we seek to sensitize persons, it's for them to try and catch it in the natural understanding of things. So, so far we've looked at the basic construct being the information and lots of it, yes. um, big data. The systems that interact with the data, whether it is through the algorithms that capture the data and shape it into a trend or a, a pull out a, a decision from it, a judgment. Yes. The, the algorithm is sort of like the judge that parses through the information and pulls what is this the history. answer to your question, so to speak. But now, um, and you've talked about the personality now, avatars, or I use that word, forget that, the idea that who you are in the actual world has a relationship with who you are in this virtual world and you're highlighting that you're it's not necessarily the same there's a big disconnect you you now have choice to create a personality or persona yes in the virtual world which is not relatable to your actual existence yeah but from a behavioral standpoint we don't know how one will influence the other as it is now, we know that. So that's the psychology. Generally, of it. right? Mm-hmm. There is a difference. You may be online and far more outspoken than you would be in person. In person. Yeah. So you 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 will express things um, very colorfully to <laughs> online, um, while uh, would interact in with the person. The real. That's not yes, the person at it's, all. It's not the person. But the question is, over time, how does these two worlds impact and reinforce each other? Or intersect. Right does what how you does your persona in the virtual world eventually impacts your persona in the real world because as it is now there is no online etiquette as it is you know you do what you want you say what you want and the only people who are policing you on the and i use are the policing, owners owners, are are the the owners, owners of, the, of the, pla- the platforms right and we saw that recently in terms of what happened with the election in the u.s when when a, info, a story yes. that could have affected the, elec- the election yes. was suppressed. I know it is emerging that it, it was really so in terms of the so-called the hard drive of Hunter Biden. That, that has now come into the fore. People are saying, oh, no, it was dead. No, it's become a real issue. Yeah, but but it, I, it no longer impacts it, the election. The, election. <laughs> right, <you see? laughs> the it no longer has an impact. So, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So. The owners of the information can do what they want with it. They, they cause you to make judgments that if you have all that information, you'll probably make that different. I, I, I want to make a point here, you know. Um, the 2016 U.S. election, mm-hmm. it, it was shown mm-hmm. how you can use information to skew things right. in a serious way. If you ask me, the same thing might have happened in the U.K. with Brexit. Mm, absolutely okay so that's one big big thing we we have not put as much emphasis on it Mm -hmm. the second thing i think that was huge again associated with the united states and and elections is what happened in the 2020 election Mm -hmm. in which uh 
platform owner could say, listen, I'm going to muzzle you. And that muzzling was far more effective than traditional media. Yes. Yeah. But you have answered the question that you posed just by the historical data that you've referenced. The question is, which has the overwhelming impact? Your online persona or your real world persona? And from what you've just highlighted for us, I'm, I'm seeing where the online activity had a tremendous impact on the real world experience. So the power of the power of the one to influence the other has been demonstrated. You can tell, create a narrative online and it replaces the truth in the real world. Very much so. Which tells us then that it is a place of great power. Of great power, immense power. And because what has happened is that a lot of persons who use traditional me media are persons with gray hair. Uh, and there is this, this whole thing about fake news and what have you, which, which, mm -hmm. which you are at a point now in which you really can't tell Look at what deep, is true. the deep fake. Right, and what it's is not true. something truth. else. And the traditional means of which you would have so-called gotten the truth is no longer considered reliable by a, a number of persons. They, they will not listen to some of these media because, media, um, yes. And truth be told, you know, is that these, all, all media have an agenda. True. That's true. Yeah, we know that. All media have an agenda. And nothing is wrong with an agenda. But you, you, you the person who is consuming the media, Must should know, know exactly should what this agenda deserve. is. Right. So that you can pass through it to see, well, okay, what is going on here? As opposed to consuming everything and saying, okay, this That's is the, the truth, truth, the old truth, and, and nothing, nothing but. but. Yes. Um, so what, the are, the, really what are the pointers that we can give to our listeners yes, that's important. on how to navigate this space? Because oh that's one of the objectives the <laughs> of this literacy. first episode. And I know it's just a bite because it is Which a world of information. Back, professor, so. <laughs> um, let me say this. Um, I want to use the, 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 um, what is happening locally yes. mm -hmm. to make this point. Um, we are at a place now in which there is not much desire to inform. There is more of a compulsion to misinform. Manipulate. Yes, because it can bring you profit. And you know that's not new? A, a lot of the, the case law and the precedents in, um, that, that deal with uh, slander and um, you know just printing stuff that you know is not true it, it is the, the punishment is based on a calculation that you have estimated that you will make more money printing the, 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 the untrue information or the malicious <laughs> eye catching information than you would printing the truth so when the court seeks to condemn that kind of behavior yeah, it punishes so you in the pocket yes it's the same principle you're highlighting now that go ahead um there <laughs> there's this case of opioids right um, yes uh, right right a big uh, thing right and 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 what the what i can't remember the name of the company now but what they did was to calculate that well okay how much money am I going to make by pushing opioids? Mm -hmm. By the time they right? catch up with me. <laughs> um, by the t when, when it's time for me to pay. But I've made enough money that. Mm -hmm. What would that be? So you mean they actually sat down, prof, and did that? It's they business. normally do. It's a it's business. I'm business. just asking you. So <laughs> it's so, it's it's so the heart of man is wicked. It's a business. Yes, so what, so. what you do is look at revenue and expenses. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Being sued for this is an expense. True. Precisely. Right? You make preparations for yeah, it. Yeah, so you make preparations for it. And just you know that this is going to happen. It's just another risk. Right? But what you then do is to say, well, okay, how much more can I make? Until they catch up with me. Until they catch up with me. And then how much I'll pay. And how much I'll pay. Mm -hmm. Right? And you may even determine who is going to go to prison for you. Oh, yes. Right? Who's the who's fall guy? Yes. Who's the fall guy? Who is that going to be? Mm-hmm. So all that gets done And then done they declare bankruptcy. Before. They oh. pay out the money that they had they are marked. Yes. <laughs> and then Somebody they declare bankruptcy. Away. It's a rough and, world. And this has been the case for forever. Mm -hmm. When you look at Big Tobacco, for instance, oh, yes. same, yes. Thing. same oh, thing. Same thing. Same thing. And the producer reminded me about Apple and Samsung. 
Samsung has built a range of products on the stolen Apple designs. Oh yes. Oh yes. And then oh, and yes. then they paid up the billions oh, yes. when they cut. Oh yes. Oh but yes. You can hardly tell the technology different now because it's the same pattern. But it raises you make a calculation. It, yes, so it and raises the questions as you continue to speak about the whole thing of morals. In this new oh. world, there are no morals. It's not a new world as it relates to morals, you know. It has always been that way. It's funny, you know, the two of you started off about, you know, things being the same. Yes. <laughs> and then he used the word new. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's always same. been it's the, the same yes. thing. You, you, make, you make business calculations and you look to see, well, okay, what it is going to be worth to me. And you, and you budget for it. Mm. Wow. And me, it means that you put down reserves for it to say, well, okay, this is going to be, this is going to come due at some point, mm -hmm. and therefore you make, your provision. you make your provisions for it, uh, and when it comes due, you can pay. Would you say that the whole thing of disinformation is a strategy that a lot of individuals and corporations are now using? Let me give you a, an example. I'm coming in just now and I'm listening to the radio and I don't want to mention any uh, company name, right. but they said um, we can give you a package, a solar package for $650,000. I've heard another one says, said $500,000. Mm -hmm. Now you can get a package, a solar package for $500,000 or $650,000, but it is not going to be beneficial for you. It means that all you're going to get is maybe six or eight panels, panels, right? And some racks and what have you. You're not going to get any battery backup, which is extremely important to right. you as a consumer because you're going to use most electricity during the evening mm -hmm. and into the night when you get home. Mm -hmm. During the day, you are not going to be able to get much out of this. And so if I sell you a package for $650,000, um, it's going to it's going to generate a lot of energy during the day, which you're not going to use. Yeah, because nobody's right? at home. Nobody's mm -hmm. at home. You may yes. use it on a Saturday or a Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're done and you're looking to see, okay, what benefit should I get from this? The consumer is going to complain mm -hmm. and say, listen, I, I'm I'm not getting what my I needs thought, still right? are not met. So you don't you don't you you. You don't give the consumer all the information, but you sell the consumer something, a product which you're saying, listen, I'm giving you a, a, a solar unit. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, well, yes, 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 I'm going to. And there's no regulation now in that area. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Right? There's, there's absolutely no regulation in that area. So you find that these things are happening. Okay. You have some persons who have more morals than others, and they'll say to you that, listen, um, $650,000 is not really going to help you to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. But others will, will send you a package mm -hmm. and will give you loans and all that kind of thing. And basically what they want to know is what is your ability to pay? And if you can pay it back, the person, you're, you're fine. You're in. Yeah. But to, to the point you made earlier about big data, mm -hmm. the utility and I think the, the attraction that this world holds for most of us is that you can find an answer to almost any question you pose. In, in the situation you just outlined, someone could go on and say, what are people saying about this product? And somewhere in this virtual world is a complaint by, you know, persons saying, well, I bought it and it was good value for money, but I found that I couldn't get this or I couldn't get that. And the, 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 in the context that knowledge is power, this universe of information is a very powerful ally to consumers, to developers, whomever is seeking to do anything. You will find that sometimes I put in a question. I remember once watching a comedy, and it's a comedy about two really fat people in a relationship. And, and um, I looked at the two persons, I'm saying, do they really look like that or are they in a fat suit? For some reason, I was just preoccupied by the idea of these two really fat persons in a love relationship. And yeah, it's a comedy. Suit. And I said, I, I really want to know. So I started to type in. And let's say the, the you know, one character's name is, is Paul. I put, 
is Paul Inner. By the time I got to Inner, it completed fat suit. Somewhere else in the world, somebody had already researched whether the character was in a fat suit. Yes. And, and even with my knowledge of technology, that was amazing to me. Because I thought, this aberrant thought that I had, which there's nothing politically correct about the thought. Let me be honest. I was just thinking, these people, they can't be really that fat in real life. Mm -hmm. They must be made up for the show. Somebody else had had that thought. And when I researched it, of course, somebody else had put up an answer. And do you know, in fact, um, persons, they do use fat suits yes. to give people a morbidly obese look for one reason or another. So that's another part of the world in which we live, where you can create a whole new body for an individual, represent it in a show that is consumed and creates the impression that a really fat person can do this or that, which in reality, usually they can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, I, I got the signal for the break. Okay. But when we come back, I would like us to talk about the, the usefulness of the world because so far we've been talking about the constraints and the limitations of it. But persons need to know that it is a rich minefield through which you can build businesses, shape careers, destroy lives too, but mostly mm -hmm. it has great value. Please let's take the break. Stay with us. Um, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Morning Connection. We are delighted to have with us Professor Paul Golding. He has been educating us and hopefully you've learned a few things too on this issue of digital literacy, but specifically how this virtual universe is constructed, um, the utility of it, some of the do's and don'ts. Um, it is a larger topic that one could comfortably cover even in a show of this sort. So we're really just sensitizing you, opening up your mind to appreciate that this world is real. It's a virtual world, but um, the value of it, the economies that, has, that have been built on it, I mean, most of you are familiar with the work of influencers who create a whole industry on social media. So we understand that there are parts of the world that is pure science, part that is software-based, and it's just the algorithms that work in the universe, the, work, the workforce of the universe. Um, but if you would, just speak to us on some other elements of it, social media in particular being a, one aspect of it, and the economies that can come out of your interaction with this virtual world. Um, not before you speak, um, the whole thing of digital literacy. I remember, and this is something that actually happened, I, there was a young lady who was in class, and the teacher was saying, she's not understanding what I'm talking about. I says, okay, probably she can't read and write. So I simply said to her, come here, and I took out the paper, and she read it perfectly. And I said to her, do you understand what you're reading? She went blank. So we're talking about digital literacy. What are we actually referring to in terms of the literacy part of it? Okay. Um, so let me look at digital literacy first and then what I'll do is to look at the, 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 the technology itself um, which is a, a whole slew of technologies really but digital literacy really is having the skills um, the know-how mm -hmm. to operate in a digital a fully digital environment okay uh, there's a framework to it which looks at a access for instance so you, you need to have access without access you cannot participate um, in in this transformational digital economy that is that is evolving now mm -hmm. um, you need to be able to to communicate okay access um, communication right mm -hmm. access communication you need to um, there's a privacy and security part of it. Okay. Um, what else is in the framework? There's a policy. Um, I, I can't remember everything else that is in the framework, but generally what digital literacy is, is having the skill to, come, um, to participate effectively in a, a, a digital environment. Okay. And also knowing the risk that is associated with it okay. because people tend to forget about that part of it but you need to understand the risk that is associated with it um i i i don't want to go off on a tangent but i i just want to make one point when we even look now at what is being pushed with digital wallets mm -hmm. they are extremely um 
good benefits to be had from it. True. Uh, but there's, there's also Don't other say. things that you need to know about, which we're not being told about. Mm. But that's for another time mm. or another place. But so that is the definition for what digital literacy is, and, and, um, without going into all yes. of the details. The skill set to navigate yeah. the, the, the virtual environment. Right. Now, um, mm -hmm. now talking about the technology itself, any um, technology that you have is dichotomous, right? Meaning that if you have a knife, which is a good piece of technology, it can be used to cut things and cook dinner and what have you, but it can also be used Infinite as a weapon mm -hmm. um, to kill. Right? The same thing with a car. A car is very convenient. Mm -hmm. It takes you for, or any kind of motor vehicle. It takes you from point A to point B quickly, but mm -hmm. there's also every year debts associated with it. The same thing with digital technology. Yes, it's a tool right? and it's a weapon. It's a tool. That's exactly what it is. It's a tool and it's a weapon. And persons have weaponized it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And persons have used it as a tool. Uh, and we, s we saw a lot of it being used as a tool, especially during, um, during uh, COVID. Uh, without Zoom, for instance, um, classes would not have continued. Business uh, meetings. Business meetings, all of these kinds Socializing. of things. Socializing. <laughs> would not have continued if that technology w was not around. Uh, the, the mental problems that would have been associated with this um, with, with, with the this isolation pandem pan pandemic yeah. for, for not Zoom and other platforms like that would We're have been true. It would have been significant. Yes. Right. Okay. Because yeah. there would have been no socialization. In fact, um, since since the pandemic, what you have found out is that the people that you live with, you have learned more about them than you did before, because when you are at work, you spend eight hours at work awake. So the people at work, you knew them pretty well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you'd go home and for a couple of hours, you would um, socialize with your family and what have you. And then you go sleep and the next morning you're up and you're gone and you're again. And you're back on the same right? grind, yes. Now, what happened during COVID is that you had to learn to know the people around you, even at a host. deeper level than you did before. And for, for some person, they realize that really, I can't stand you. Hey! Mm. For you so know long. That, you know, you yes, know, that, you know <laughs> that the voice went up in some countries. Yes. So did um, violence against, against women, women and, and children and, children and, and, and yes, yes, various sexual... Yes. And because violence against men too, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yes, partners. <laughs> oh my lord uh, so, so it's transformative of lifestyle uh, of and course. even and work patterns yes and I, I don't think we have given zoom for instance the credit that the it credit deserves credit. <laughs> because it has it, facetime it, it, yeah. face yeah. i mean facetime was the way through the, the means by which many people said goodbye to loved ones yes. who were dying in hospitals right, right. um yeah but the technology oh, the overall, technology. you're quite right. It, and and it when was you a look great at partner other, to us. Yes, when you look at times. other aspects of it too, um, being able to shop online, mm -hmm. especially for food. Right. Um, uh, persons got innovative. Uh, Businesses came out of it. Economic yes, yeah. the economy activity is came it. out of it. Right. Excellent. So it is. It is clear. We haven't had drone delivery in Jamaica, Not, but it's yes, coming. But it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is a there is <laughs> there is a lot of innovation that came out of it, right. and most of these innovations were driven by technology. <laughs> Other than that, these things wouldn't we would not oh, the way we responded to COVID mm -hmm. without technology, it would have been completely different. Yeah, completely different. And chances are, what would have happened is that the pandemic would have lasted longer because it would have required more interaction for you even to get food right yes so the right. isolation the isolation we were would have been far more difficult uh, to achieve yes and you saw how some people broke the parties had to <laughs> go on yes. notwithstanding because the isolation proved to be unbearable for some um the economies uh, you've touched on that i think that is that's that might be enough for this session but how do we acquire those skill sets we've had one or two persons who have called and said you know whatever training is available i want to be included okay um the there are not a lot of outlets now for training as it relates so that's to another this. business that yes. can come out of yes. it yes um i mentioned while we we're on break about um, microcredits and microcredits are 
credits in which you, sorry. So this is at your university? Yes, because we're looking at University of Technology, we're looking at microcredits in which what you do is not go through a full degree. Um, you, you have a menu and you can select from the menu. Mm -hmm. Train for the job. You, mm -hmm. Yes. Training yeah. for that right. specific job, which is something that Hart has pioneered also in terms of designing, um, you call it microcredits, just something for the job. So, mm -hmm. and there right. you go and say this job, this job, and then you have the full thing, like in terms of your in the food preparation. Yes. I can just be yeah. trained to just make sandwiches, and yes. that's the job that you have. Yeah, so Hart has actually put out a series of videos mm -hmm. that do exactly that, and the the lecturer there who is the voice of those videos, she's going to come on the program with us. Um, if I can organize some sort of interaction, I will, because she has been doing these like five minute videos that speak to just a specialized, a, a small area of things. And it's part of their digital literacy program, appreciating that persons learn in different ways. Yes. And some are very visual. And if you, you have a video, it's a much more appealing way to deliver the information than if they have to read and sit in a classroom yes. and so on. Um, how is the university itself utilizing the technology in the, in the delivery of, of education? Oh, um, what I found is that delivering online takes more work it, it, no, I, I don't <laughs> think so <laughs> to get used to it. some people said no for, for me what it has done and for a lot of my colleagues what it has done it has opened a lot of other opportunities oh that's what it has done yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, the, I use videos more than I normally would have and like you say when when I use a video and then I explain it after Students, mm. that's what a that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes, right. So mm -hmm. I have done, for instance, if I use just one example, I have said to students, listen, do not go um, in an airport, for instance, or any use any public Wi-Fi and do anything uh, financial. Secure, go right, into anything your bank financial. account. Don't do anything <laughs> like that. You can browse the internet, but don't go do anything else, right? And I explained to them what an evil twin was in which, um, but when I showed them what an evil twin was and how it works, in which somebody can be sitting over there with a computer and what they're doing, what I'm seeing is their Wi-Fi hotspot. It is called Ligony Club mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. free Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. but it's not really Ligony Club's free Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> It's the evil twin. It's the evil twin. So I'm there now, and I am browsing. Not, I'm not browsing. I decided to go pay something on my bank. Oh. And, and all the information the that you go on the free Wi-Fi, and all the information that I am transmitting it's the, it's it's the, captured. Is, is being captured. By that individual. Mm -hmm. And when you go your bank, oh, you reach of it empty. Yeah. But you're still getting online, you know. You know, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're, you're still getting online, but uh, what is happening now is that there is an evil twin in between you and the internet who is gathering all your information oh. and can therefore go and do whatever they want to do it. In oh. fact, what they'll do is impersonate you after this. Afterwards, become steal your identity and yeah. spend your money. That's all your um, money. Yes. So, and that's, that's one of the skill is... is is the knowledge of how how it works yes. so that you're not easily drawn into compromising positions right. in the real world if you were approaching the bank and you saw a man well these days a mask would not be the thing to tell you he's a robber but maybe if you saw a man without a mask <laughs> I'm, I'm just being facetious but if you saw an obvious danger you could take steps to you would say boy I'm not going to the ATM or you know if I approach an ATM and I see a group of young men idling around it i choose another atm yes. because one i don't want the conversation two there may be some danger there but when you're sitting in the privacy of your home surrounded by all your grilled up doors mm -hmm. and you decide to just take a run to the bank account and and take some money out mm -hmm. you're not seeing the dangers that are lurking and you know well obviously i need not say anymore so the awareness that there are these dangers is amongst the things that persons have to develop a skill for it and understand the architecture for firewalls and security systems and uh, as you say be aware be wary of the free wi-fi a lot of us don't want to pay for stuff but you're sitting in an airport and they tell you free wi-fi as you say 
yeah. be, be very careful of that. At least that tip we can give on this program. Um, free yes. applications uh. as well, says the producer from the sideline. I wanted to know if he, if he would join us because he's a technology aficionado himself. But what would you say about free applications? Well, nothing is free. <laughs> oh, <that laughs> is somebody right. paying for it. <laughs> you're paying for it. Not somebody. Yeah. You are paying yeah. for it yeah, one how, way or another. It's just how you're paying for it. It's how. But that, as, as the pastor would say, I mean... Not even salvation is free. <laughs> I mean. Somebody paid for <laughs> yes. it. Jesus yes. Jesus paid it all. And paid yeah. a high price. Ah, yeah. with his say. life anyway. You can't right. pay a so, higher price. So, so free applications are in essence saying, listen, I'll give you this free on condition that I can use all the information. That everything that you uh, do. That you have, that you'll be using. And maybe all the information that's on your phone. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. That yeah. you don't even know yeah. that they have all that access. Yeah, but the trade-off is always this, you know. I will give up this for the convenience. Yeah, okay. That's what the trade-off is. Just that you don't know what you're giving up for the convenience. And they're not telling you. Oh, they're, no, they're not telling <laughs> you. Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, but they have told you, you know. Just like they put it in the when fine they, print. Or when they right? say, you know, you ex you, you sign to... Yes. You accept that you have, you have these things this. will happen. Yeah. yeah, right. Not all of them ask you whether they can have access to your photos and your contacts or your um, location. Everything. And so on. Usually it's everything Yeah, usually want. it's everything yeah, that they, they want. They want everything that you You should have. assume that it's everything. Yes. Yeah. And persons willingly give it up because they're saying, listen, this is far more convenient. And that's one of the big advantages of using technology. Convenience. The, the convenience of doing things. You, you, you mentioned earlier on about being able to um, pay your bills online. Uh, I have, even before COVID, I have no patience for going in line. Standing in yeah, institutions, long no, lines. I have no patience yes, for it. Yes, nor do I. So... I will go online and usually it's my wife who does this anyway. Um, no, I have, to, I have to say who is the chancellor there. Check her here. Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was you just know. about to say who yeah. is doing that. Yeah, and I, 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 she's not feeling too well, so um, I just want to big her up this morning. Oh. But you she's the chancellor of the, the exchequer and she does all of the bill payments. Um, so, but we have been doing this all along. So you're very comfortable and confident about your online transactions. Oh, yes. What gave you that degree of confidence? Um, it's an unfair question to ask me because I may not represent all and sundry because I'm in the space and understand But, but the space. sometimes I know, I know quite a few professionals who, because of their knowledge, yes. stay away from certain things. Yes. But your professionalism and your knowledge has caused you to be confident, which means that other persons can be less informed than you, can develop a similar degree of confidence. Yes, yes. There, there, one, one of the notions that people tended to have and may still have is that doing things in Jamaica is not as secure. Doing things online, online. in Jamaica is not as secure as doing it elsewhere. elsewhere. But that's not true. It's that actually is the opposite. The it is as secure as anywhere else. Yeah. Um, well, it might be more secure at some other places because we the, the hackers and the the raiders might not be as prevalent in jamaica um they, as they don't care doing as long as they can make money uh, <laughs> it's an equal opportunity thing <laughs> uh, yeah they they, they 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 really don't care but there there has been this view that well you know what i'd rather do this overseas than in jamaica but not it, me but it doesn't make a difference um, your security online generally is the same as anywhere else uh, and therefore um, you, 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 you should feel as secure if you if you're doing anything online the the other thing why I think I have become very comfortable online is that I understand the the, the, the technology and persons for instance um, if you're going online and you're doing a transaction uh, you'd want to see a closed padlock um, <laughs> as opposed to an mm -hmm. open pad padlock, padlock because yes. the, the, the closed padlock suggests that, well, okay. It's encrypted. It's encrypted and, and therefore safe. Uh, 
and especially when you're paying with credit cards and all of that if something happens and you have not been negligent in any way the credit card company will cover you will cover it yes. will cover you but understand too you know that the way the credit card company the operates tunnel. you know is that no no they they factor all of this in their cost mm -hmm. oh, okay so yeah. you have, so you're point really you yeah man so you're, you're all self insured this. yes you're, that's exactly <laughs> what it is you're self insured all of this is factored up front you're doing a business you, you, okay. you're going to try to determine what, the percentage, percentage yes. of, of, of risk right okay and you're going to use technology too to find out well okay is this the the, the bind pattern of person x mm -hmm. and if you see any deviation from that it raises a flag to say well okay maybe we need to get in touch with this person to find out have you been to canada lately are you in canada no yes mm -hmm. they, they'll send you right? a, or they'll because, just shut down your card and, yes, and, and send you a message right, to say call me we have seen some, some suspicious activity on on your credit card and therefore so all of these things um, or are part you. and parcel of, uh, of of what takes place, and and again, it's still the use of technology that is doing it. That that drives the security. That drives it right. Yeah. No, when you look at other things that we do online, and we even take them for granted. No, um, uh, booking a airline ticket, ticket right? Um, renting a car, um, hotel reservation, food, hotel reservation, um, whatever. Um, the 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 um the way traffic light works and um they 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 determine well when should they change based on traffic congestion and gps um uh uh telling you where to go how to get to a location i mean i'm i i call this 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 gentleman to to, to fix my um to, to come and check my fridge and he says where you live and i was about to send i'm saying listen send me the location via whatsapp it just gets a pin right and it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and he then gets it and he gets turn by turn and he and he comes to me i don't i no longer need to and listen i didn't use it before you know yeah. this person called me and and said listen just send it to send me it. yes oh you hadn't used it I before, hadn't used it before. You, weren't you weren't aware the of, chancellor of the chancellor of the exchequer was more familiar with Maybe. those <laughs> 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 that's <laughs> chancellery <laughs> work <laughs> Ch but no so it has made some risks in everyday activity practically disappear because yes. if you have a modern phone or a modern car you don't get lost you don't run out of gas yes. there are some things now that if they happen they're rarities but it comes down to a point you made initially you said access if you don't have access hmm. to the internet yes. you have no access to this technology right so even as we are sensitizing persons in Jamaica we are still very much aware that what we're talking about many people won't even have the full use of it because basic access meaning you can connect and then the quality of the access are also some issues that we have to take into concern one of the areas of awareness too for me i'm very impatient when i'm online forgetting that the speed of the service is based on the quality of the connection, connection that i right. have so some jamaicans are mistrustful for of it because even though you would spend more time standing in a bank line, mm -hmm. when you're there and you're watching the things circling and circling and there's a certain bank that I can never get authenticated on the first try, you have to keep entering. It just doesn't connect immediately. I'm starting to wonder if it's a strategy. <laughs> but it, it's, it's all based on the, on the, yes, it's all based on the quality. And that's something that persons need to understand with the technology that the quality of your connection determines the speed of your transaction. Mm -hmm. Access, though, has increased a lot since, since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it is not where we want it to be, uh, but access has increased. Um, the, the person's access, meaning one, that you have a device. That you have a device, true. Two, that you have electricity. Oh Lord! Um, which 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 persons will get either by fair means or, or foul by right. fire or force? <laughs> All right. And then the third one is that you have internet connectivity of a quality that yes. can sustain whatever activity yes. you're embarking on. And some of those are issues that will take up another time because it affects policy affects it. Right. And I agree with you. I think access has increased, but perhaps quality has decreased because the amount of bandwidth that is available unless the companies that invest in infrastructure beef up the, 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 the 
you know, the, the quantity, let's mm -hmm. use that word, you'll find more people. It's like being on the road during rush hour. Yes. More people on the same stretch of road. Right. At the same time. Yes, so everything means slows down. Everything slows down. Yeah. Important okay. for persons to understand. We're going to wrap up the segment with you, Professor. And um, I'm I, just, I, I just, I'm just wondering. To. All right. So formulate kind of what you would want to say to us about this world that we are embarking into. And if you can, you know, ride and whistle, Percy is going to ask you a question. No, just quickly, <laughs> um, because you, you earliest you referred to a world that has information and people who own the information. And I raise the thing of what, how do, how do we trust the people of this information that they're going to do rightly? I leave that one with you for you to think because I know you're coming back in terms of the whole um, ethics of yes. the people of the big the big businesses, the people who own the money. So just are we still online? We yeah, are. They're, they're we are <laughs> yes, oh. yes. We have we have like four minutes okay. to the break. Yes. So um, you could add, you can think about there, there think about on that. that. Yeah. Oh, we're in break now or not? No, no. no. Not in oh, break we're on now. air. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, there is a view that the, the persons who are going to misuse your information is likely to be the government. Truth be told is that, as it is now, the government does not have as much information on we as private entities mm -hmm. do. Wow. True. By far. Not even close. Not even a fraction, not even I close. would say. Mm -hmm. right? Private entities have far more information on us. And uh, for me to make this a little bit more candid, foreign private entities Absolutely. have far more information on us than any local entity have on us. Wow. Because the more information that you feed into any of these platforms mm -hmm. is, is the better that overall they create a profile of you mm -hmm. and what you do and your likes and dislikes and all that kind of a thing. So you create a profile of the person based on all the information that you give. Now, uh, and a platform will say, listen, tell me about yourself, give me background information, mm -hmm. which As school you, are you registering. go to, <laughs> everything. How did you hear about right? us? <laughs> everything and all that information mm -hmm. gets parceled to create a profile of you. Now, let me, let me just touch on something controversial here. Um, Hi, Spida. So that's again. Hi, Spida. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm going somewhere else here now. Mm -hmm. In terms of digital wallets, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes, you raised that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Digital wallets removes. So, say digital wallets and and um, central bank issued digital cash mm -hmm. creates a, a a serious issue that we have not spoken about. I write about it, but we have not spoken about it yet. Digital, uh, central bank digital cash mm -hmm. is tantamount to cash. Cash. But there's a big difference between the two. With, if you give me cash, mm -hmm. this cash becomes anonymous when it comes to me. Mm -hmm. It is not shown that you have given me cash, right? With digital wallets, what happens is that the cash can get tracked. And traced. Traced. Mm. Right, through, right throughout <laughs> the system. Right? Because if I give you if I give you give me a money, let me see what you have. Let me see what kind of money you have. Mm -hmm. I give you a thousand dollars. I take mm -hmm. it. No, be not and then you'll give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you give me a, you give me a thousand dollars. There's a unique number on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. For digital cash is the same thing. Okay. You have to be able to uniquely identify the funds. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you can uniquely identify anything in a network, you can track and can trace find it, it. And you can find it. it is and I can give it back mm -hmm. to you. It is the equivalent of the police sting operation where they mark the cash and yeah. see where it pops up. Yeah. They know who it was given to in the first instance. And you have to close the gap. How did it get from Pastor Percy yeah. to Professor Golding? Yeah. We will think on that. Wow. Uh, but, you know, it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's take a break. Let us take our break. Good morning and, and welcome back. We're in the final stretch. And um, our guest, Professor Golding, just 
he put something on the table that uh, where I'm trying to decide the pasta if, if we should take alone. it up. Yeah. <laughs> leave it alone. Eh? Pastor <laughs> said leave it alone. Leave it I alone mean, for the time being. Anytime you disobey the priest, you pay the price. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, We're not going to disobey the priest. Out and I say Suffice no. it to say, um, you, you, uh, there's been a lot of talk, aside from the wallet, there's been a lot of talk about blockchain technology, which goes a little deeper in beyond the, the sensitization approach that we are taking. Um, but when you talk about the ability mm-hmm. to identify an, a, a, a currency or, or value electronically and, and keep its connection from one person to another, um, it's something that worth understanding. But what I like about it is that you now don't need to have misunderstandings about value. You know, sometimes you pay somebody and they say, you pay me short. You say, no, man, I count it out. And somehow a yes. $1,000 had fallen yes. between the cracks, between the two of you. Yes. You are certain you gave them the right amount. Yes. And they are certain that it is short. Yes. That dispute no longer exists. No longer exists. That's for sure. So it, you were asking, what would I like to leave? With <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because yes. yes. you left that one alone. Right? Yeah. Um, I think the main thing that I'd want to leave with the... Uh, listeners is that all technologies are dichotomous wonderful yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. good and bad yeah. like yeah. everything They're all else. good and bad um, mm-hmm. it's important mm-hmm. that we know both the good and the bad about it mm-hmm. um, so that we can make informed decisions our decisions though in a lot of ways is going to be limited over time because we tend to prefer mm-hmm. convenience and we will give up most things for convenience true yeah mm-hmm. um I, I i maybe i shouldn't go here either but um <laughs> some persons that i've been speaking to say that well but listen i've not only ch- i've i've not only feel more comfortable going to church online but i've also changed churches mm. because um for whatever reason not feeling yes, right yes you yeah. you right and and know that you have choice know that you have choice some of us when during the isolation you know all three four five church yeah because you could listen to different persons and, and different you begin time. to have a basis for comparison yes and and choice yes. at the heart of it is choice yes so we embrace the technology for the choices that it, it gives, gives us but sure. we need the discernment to yes. choose wisely very much so is it different for anything else in it's, life it's not when we choose our politician, we have to choose wisely too. Let me choose our wives. Wives? Our How many are you choosing? <laughs> you know, in some countries. <laughs> I, I, did, well, I, I, I didn't what, know that the yeah, pastor some was Some of us are politics. staying. <laughs> <laughs> in some countries. Some of us are leaving that alone. <laughs> I, I've, I've only had, I've only <laughs> had one. <laughs> uh, me told what we have, you know. I didn't get that S on it. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the chance of the extra yeah. yeah. making sure. Well, yes, you He's know. the chancellor. Yeah, I, w- I want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that plurality would be unfunded. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the All right, Professor, thank you so much. It, it yeah, is even nicer to interview you in person. We've had some good chats on yes. the telephone, the technology. Yes. And so here I go again. In person will beat technology any day. Uh, that's how I feel too. Yeah. That's why it says for forsake not the assembling of yourself. There's something that happens yes. in the corporate when we come yeah. together. Hebrews. Absolutely. Um, the next time we speak, we might talk a little bit about transhumanism and the way that the the virtual reality can be mm. deepened to be to be even to be even more intense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have I, I need to plug this just before we go yes um, I've sent out a survey to you guys both yeah. of you I'd like to get your number that I'd send it to no, you oh I please it. I have already it. given it oh, to you I, I, I was asking Every permission to here. release it oh please <laughs> I want to release it we yes. have whatsapp groups and I, I gave, the, and I gave please, the permission please. were you mistaken about the yes. permission but the man but one thing with it, no profit. No, we don't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, if if you really want to find out, you gotta you, it in you, gotta, you gotta dig deep. Yeah, but if you do it in parts, you see, if you do it one time mm-hmm. and the person do it, 
done. Right? As, as with most parts, things in life. Yeah, if you do, do it, it in well. parts, you, you, <laughs> it's a different person because yeah, he meant it. As you have seen, it is looking at Tell a me about number it. of a things thing. about oh. us. I loved it. And it is forcing you. It was like a conversation give, with you, actually. Yes, to the yeah, survey. It's a, it, it yes. is a, it forcing you to, to answer think certain man. questions oh, yeah, about yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah. And what do you think? When, you I, get, when I tested it on some persons, <laughs> they said that is not a questionnaire in which you just tick, tick, tick. No, no, no. You, you have think. to think deeply. You have to stop and say, but hold on. Um, mm-hmm. Is this what I really believe? All right. Yeah, so, yes. yeah. 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 So, full confession I fell asleep twice. Yes. I, I told I Pastor she Percival. Said, uh, I bet she told said that. She told me. I said because yes. it's it's very long. It it's is like long. I think questions. it's like forty-nine questions. Yes. Fifty questions. Fifty. Yeah. 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 Did I miss one? You can't miss any you because you can't, you can't move forward yeah. without answering. So I. Uh, the, the whole questionnaire, though, is still even longer than that. You know, what I have done is there are certain things. You know, there are certain things oh. that we really take for granted. True. Um, freedom, for instance, is something that we take for granted because we have never, except for the slavery, which mm-hmm. is which is which is a big, big thing, mm-hmm. right? But in terms of our every, everyday life, mm-hmm. we do not understand that in some countries, if you want to do certain things, you can't do it. True. Right. And if you do it, there's going to be persecution one way or another. And the pandemic has right? even highlighted that further. Yes. So those questions, for instance, when I looked at them, and when I asked some of the persons who I tested it on, they, they said, listen, we, we don't have these problems. We, we don't have the problem of freedom. And because we don't know what not f- be not being free is it's about, yeah. we just take it for granted we're gonna have a freedom conversation on another occasion but i'm gonna say this to yes. provoke your thought process the fact of slavery in our history has given us a warped understanding of freedom we're enslaved and we don't even know it because we keep <coughs> thinking of slavery at the highest at the zenith of the kind of chattel slavery that we endured so we think anything outside of that is free and it is not yeah but f- freedom um, is, is is going to be very relative here right uh, absolutely yeah and yeah. when i'm talking about freedom because if you ask me the persons in the united states who think they are free are so unfree that you don't you're, there you go because there you go. they are fed and they see the world they're only free to consume what, yes, they get. what they get mm. That's so, true. so we, we can we can have a long conversation on freedom, <laughs> on freedom. and what freedom <laughs> is and what have you <laughs> Right? Yes, but I'm looking you, forward to that. It, 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 Especially too in the context of technology. Es- because, because technology that, curates an experience for you that yes, feels very free. Yes. But yes. try and step outside the door. Yes, very much so. Yeah. You very much so. Oh, well. You're existing in a universe that has been created for you. I don't even know. You yes, you don't even don't know. The that matrix. That's the thing. thing. Yes. That's yes. The thing. You're in the matrix. The right. Matrix. And you therefore now think that, yeah. you, that you are free, but you are constrained. Mm-hmm. In, in, in ways that yes. are unimaginable. You are free within these, well, these borders. Try step yeah. out, right? Though. Do not try and come yeah. out. Because yeah. then your freedom gets curtailed. But this is nothing new either. Precisely. It's nothing new. It's always been so. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's nothing new. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Because, right. yeah, anyway. You know what's going to happen? We will need to do like another hour. What um, the producer calls beyond the morning. Yes. <laughs> because the morning is never enough. I cannot thank you enough. It's been a wonderful experience. We had a p- certain amount of pain saying goodbye to Sizzler, who performed for us before he left. Yes. So you understand that you need to perform. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, no, I thought, I'm your friend. <laughs> I'm your friend here. Uh, you're going to sing for us? Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> but you, you need a drum and you need two or three people with you. What was, so um, <laughs> what was the song, the title of the song? Free, the song? Uh, <laughs> what was it again? New name. New, new name, new name, name. New, new song. Yeah, new name. Yeah, new name. And I use that... In oh, so that's your performance. That was my performance. You know what? You didn't see the play on words. Yes, man. On. Yes, yeah. yeah. That it was brilliantly done. Yes. Yeah, brilliantly he, he does, done. He does. He does. He really my is an to artist. You, sir. Yeah. And really? Pastor, were you enriched by staying at Let the table with something. the professor? Remember, well, I, so we can say this now. As yeah. you are leaving, you yeah. never want to be here, but I've been your greatest ally and friend <laughs> on the program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. well, it's good. Good to meet yes. you. Good then looking forward to a further fruitful yes. engagement with you because yes. it looks like when we <laughs> begin to talk we go all over the place but yeah, it man. is it's, in it's, it's big, it man. grows it grows it grows yes, yes. thank you very much all we right, appreciate guys, it, was, it it was really good being yeah. here thank well, you very see much see you another the time all right, then. All, right then. all right guys we are truly in the last um, 15 minutes of the show um, it has been it has been a morning 
I don't know if we even have time for one phone call. Do we have time or no? We're not trying to take any phone calls this morning. We're not taking any phone calls. Okay, well... You are most welcome, Professor. Um, what are you saying to me, my we should We should probably, with, in terms of that, Ah, uh, yeah. What we yes. could do in terms of the the God cares group that we have, we should send out that questionnaire in it and see how many of our persons didn't respond. Yes. I've sent mm -hmm. it out already to groupings and people that I know because I think the questionnaire that he has asked us is so it's deep. It's deep. It is deep. It is instructive and, and it is mm -hmm. pushing you to really think. Yes. Your brother is leaving. Oh, you're leaving now, righteousness. No man, come sit by the mic and tell me something. Oh, this is righteousness. This is righteousness. righteousness. Okay. And I, let me tell you, righteousness is my family. Righteousness look like any other wind from up in Davidstown. Okay. Righteousness of an Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's All right. righteousness. Move closer to the mic, righteousness. This is not your phone now. Um, welcome to the morning connection. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Lynette. Family. Family, yes. Yes, righteousness. So, what has come to you, to your thoughts now from the program because you've been here? You know, I was here and I, I never really clearly got to me, I never, you know, now you are clear. Oh, okay. No, no, when Sisra did a most chance, it's Sisra chance, I must die. It's a chance, it's a chance with Sisra. I'm not going to tell you there's a new name, you know, a new name, you know, and his name is Righteousness. Aye. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Isaiah 62, verse 2, tell about the new name. Yes. Judgment Yard, which is the foundation for the naming yes, of. Uh, Aye. True. Yes, so, um, and, and even Psalm 23, verse 3, Through the parts of righteousness, for his name's sake. His name is righteousness. All right. Yes. The righteousness. That's what his throne is built up on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Righteousness. Okay. You want to give us one of your poems because we never know that you were an artist. The one that the one that give you the name that them yeah give us that one that how they were able to to oh. give you the name you remember I mean the righteous, righteous yes you were supposed to yeah, come yeah. prepared to read one of your poems so where is it but me, me have everything in half read oh, okay that good inspire me and touch me more than all right do a quick one yeah. for us we have a few but, minutes oh, yeah. left so um which one was to say one righteousness, righteousness. oh you want righteousness all right bless you man glory to the eyes blessed be the lord yeah man a righteousness over mess and god over ungodliness because lord so must declare his righteousness unto the people yeah so where there is no righteousness, when righteousness increase, evil decrease. So it's a righteousness over mess and God over ungodliness. Because where there is no righteousness, there is no godliness. And where there is no godliness, a PMS like wickedness, covetousness, greediness, no happiness, nastiness. The youth them in a mess, them live in a darkness. Because Jesus Christ is the light of the world and they that follow Jesus will never be in darkness. So it's a righteousness over mess. And God over ungodliness. Because where there is no righteousness, there is no godliness. And when righteousness increase, evil decrease. Bless righteousness. Glory to the eyes. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Mm. That is a fitting note mm. on which to wrap up the mm. week's events. Mm. Thank you all. Those online, those who were in, on air, those who, I was going to say, those who called us. But thank you, righteousness, for blessing us with your presence yes. and your poem. Pastor Percival, thank you very much. Always um, being my partner <laughs> in our our, our partner in righteousness, our path of righteousness, righteousness and, and kingdom living. Yes. Producer and um, my beloved niece, who has been interning with me these last two weeks. I hope you are still enjoying the program. Have a blessed day, everyone. We're gonna leave you with some music from the president, the sizzler himself, yes. as we say, "What good? Don't book your toe." Have a good weekend. Bless.